Hey, what's up? Welcome to Season 2, Episode 22 of Movie Dumpster. Our blockbuster bombs are rolling right along, and today we got Deep Rising from 1998, directed by Steven Summers. I'm Joel Scola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor the Deep Knight Rises McGraw. Welcome to the dumpster. What the hell are these goddamn things? I'm beginning to fear that our friends here may be some kind of strange offshoot of the Arkeo Toya family. The Toya family. And to think I was starting to worry. At 4,000 feet, the Toya about as long as a pencil, with bodies about the size of a golf ball. But those at 20,000 feet have been found to eat full grown sharks at 30 or 40,000 feet. Well, you do the math. This is, uh, this is not good. Are we talking some kind of mutated sea monsters here? Who gives a shit what they are? Just tell us how to kill these motherfuckers. The Atoy are very crafty. They hide in burrows and they catch their victims with spiny tentacles and then they, they crush them between massive jaws. Yeah, and then they eat you, right? No, they drink you. They drink you alive. Now, I don't know where you're going with this, but <laughs> explain. <laughs> Wait, explain the Deep Night Rises? Yeah. That's yeah. literally just a play on words I came up with. I was like, all right, just use, <laughs> use Deep and Rising in something, and my brain went, Deep Night Rises, and that was how that happened. I thought you were going to give us a, like six degrees of Kevin Bale or some shit. <laughs> ah. No. Did I just say Kevin Bale? Christian Bale. Kevin Bale, yes. <laughs> Christian Conroy. <laughs> I'm not exhausted. Well, you remember the name of the movie last week when we were talking about Reign of Fire. Uh, I, I said uh, Dark Knight Returns, and that is not the same, uh, you know, thing. No, it, you know, I, I heard it in the return the recording, and then when I listened to it again recently, I was like, I'm pretty sure I let that go just because I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be like, excuse me. I didn't even fucking realize. There, first of all, there's a there's a movie version of Dark Knight Returns too, Sean. Oh boy. By the way, and it's not Dark Knight Rises. It's animated. So, okay, um, how did you guys now? Now both of you have never seen this film before, or Sean hasn't seen it specifically. Never even heard of it until you recommended it for this. I had uh, I had uh, only seen chunks of this on TV throughout my life, and never in one sitting. And but and so and and having said that, this movie fucking rocks. Like <laughs> this movie defined 1998 for me <laughs> you mean it wasn't godzilla no, I, I, I went to go see godzilla in the theater but i didn't get to go see this in the theater <laughs> and here, here's the thing here's the thing i did not pay attention to the opening credits uh when this was rolling along when i watched it um and for some reason when the director's name popped up at the end i was like this makes so much fucking sense now that oh I've yeah sat through this whole thing yeah because steven summers and i'm like wow this is very, this is it's flavored like the mummy. Oh yeah, it's every, it's it's fucking tasty, man. It's even got an actor from the mummy. Yeah. Yes. I guess technically the mummy would have an actor from Deep Rising, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. This is the fucking Big Mac of fucking blockbuster movies, man. <laughs> this movie has like I'm like this is like so many things I already love. Yeah. And there's so many people in this I didn't know were in this fucking movie because by the time I sat down and watched it, like I said, because the chunks like most of these characters were already dead. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, this movie has a really sad story. I mean, honestly, anything that came out after Titanic, before Titanic came out of theaters, is a sad story. Well, yeah, but specifically for some reasons I want to go into. So, I went into this blind and didn't look up a lot of trivia because, I, because I'm like, I want this viewing of this to be pristine because I haven't seen this the whole, th- the whole thing ever before. Sure. So, like, didn't know, the, <laughs> didn't know the fucking director, didn't know half the people in it, um... Didn't, I don't know how much money it made, but I'm sure it fucking didn't do well. No, oh, that's why we're doing it on this show, because... Yeah, I know. Fuck me. Wait till we get to that. My only knowledge of him, like, oh yeah, it's like a well-renowned monster movie that came out and... At the theaters. Sure did. Took the shit the fucking bed. So, so Joe, take the literal uh, shit you were just talking about out of my mouth and, and break this down for us. Do you want me to break down the plot, or do you want me to break down the... 
problems. Yeah, uh, this this uh this this sordid history you're teasing us with. Uh Okay. So this was where the fuck do I start with this? <laughs> it's that bad. It's 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 just kind of like one of those shitty like like wow, this is really awesome, but it's going to go through all of this bullshit and then kind of fucking fart out on the other end and then go totally unnoticed for years and then be rediscovered and be like, wow, this movie's great. Can I can I ask a question in comparison to a film that I discovered a few years ago that went through probably a similar process? Sure. Is it kind of like the, the same journey as like a movie like Trick or Treat went through? It's sort of. Okay. Um, It's one of those things where like um, Stephen Summers like had this script written and originally it was called um, Tentacle and then became Octolus <laughs> and then became Deep Rising, right? So... Wow, I'm glad they workshopped that. Yeah. Um, so, basically, it was supposed to have a lot more money attached to it. It was supposed to be this giant tentpole film, right? They ended up releasing it, like, a, a month after fucking Titanic came out. What the Like Sean was saying. Fuck? Um, and also, it was supposed to come out the year before, in 1997. Um... But the effects took so fucking long because the original studio hired to do the effects couldn't do the fucking effects that they wanted, right? Wow. So then they were like, okay, Rob Bottin and ILM, get your fucking ass in here and do this shit. Whoa. Yeah. And uh, that's what happened. So okay, hey, and it, was in, it was in post-production for a whole other year. So that's why it came out in 98. So this was supposed to be like the, the tentpole monster movie that we hadn't seen in however many years but what happened was um by the time it came out we're already getting hit with the relic and we're getting hit with mimic and we're getting hit with anaconda oh my god that's right yeah so all of these giant cg cgi creature films are are coming out around the same time so it kind of gets lost in the shuffle there you know what i'm saying yeah not to mention like not to cut you off but like no, you're good. also a, a movie that is like at the end of the day a monster movie action horror st- oh yeah we'll get into it yeah uh but also features a boat <laughs> Fucking yep. essentially sinking. <laughs> yep. There's that thing, too. And people are like, well, I just saw fucking Titanic. Who gives a shit? But Titanic... I Listen, I'm not going to shit on Titanic because like, I'm not a big fan of that movie. No. But it is very well done, and I yeah. totally get it. Mm-hmm. It's a wonderfully made movie that I have no desire to see ever again. I don't know if I go that far. It's fine. But it's not on the top of my list of rewatches like, in the next 10 years. I sure as shit don't reach for it. Right. When I'm like, man, I, I really want to see Billy Zane. I don't go for that one. Yeah. I'd rather watch The Mummy at that point. I'd rather watch fucking Demon Knight at that point. It's not even him in The Mummy, but we're going to just ignore that. Um... <laughs> Are you telling me that Brandon Fraser is Billy Zane? No, uh, what's his face? Who's that guy that kind of looks like Billy Zane? Oh, Emotep? <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. Dude, if fucking Billy Zane was Emotep, that gets 12 stars from me. Okay. <laughs> uh, this guy, he he also, he's got a pretty long list of movies that, like, I feel like the trajectory slowly torpedoes to the bottom of the ocean. Um, yes and no. I know what you're gonna bring up, and I'm gonna tell you, motherfuckers, that it's a good movie. <laughs> well, I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start at least the ones that I wrote down. There was a okay. couple I didn't bother with because either I never heard of them or I just didn't think it was worth bringing up. But you guys can always jump in. Are we going by written by or directed by? Um, I'm just gonna start with the first one I wrote down that I've talked to multiple people over the years about and have been told that movie doesn't exist. I've never heard of that movie. Really? The fucking '94 Jungle Book. Oh yeah. What? Not the live action one. What? But that movie, I've, I've, I, I, maybe it's just me, but I've talked to multiple people about that film because I've seen it as, you know, I haven't seen it in years, but uh, I've seen it several times as a child, and uh, it scared the shit out of me. Um, that big fucking anaconda at the end and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I re- see. I've never actually seen it, but I had a tape. I forget which movie it was, but that... It's kind of like Tarzan, honestly. Right. Does that play... I think that trailer is before Ace Ventura When Nature Calls. Probably. I'm almost positive it is, and I know, like, it's the same, like I think it's the same position as you. Like, I've never actually seen it, but I've been at places where it's on. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I knew someone had the tape, but, like, I know that movie exists. I can picture it in my head very clearly. Uh, maybe we'll tackle it one day. Maybe not. Maybe it's not worth the uh, movie dumpster treatment. But the basic yeah. plot from what I remember is basically Mowgli is essentially an adult, and he comes to America like Tarzan and even kind of like George of the Jungle, mm. and then he goes back. 
I don't remember the rest of the film. That's all I really remember. And the anaconda at the end. That's in a fucking temple. All I remember from that... Tra- okay, so I saw the trailer like 9,000 fucking cha- times. But, like, I remember, like, Mowgli grabbing a fly out of the air and sure. then, like, eating it. But, like, he doesn't really eat it because he's, like, trying to gross out like a like a primped fucking Englishman. Yeah. And that's all I remember. It's taken super... It's basically like, you know... All the animals are real, and, you know, he just, you know, much like Tarzan, he's just kind of, you know, uh, coexisting with them. Yeah. But anyway. The plot of that movie sounds like uh, Jungle to Jungle owes it an apology. <laughs> uh, but it's but it's played pretty fucking straight-laced, as far as I recall. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying. It's like Jungle to Jungle sounds like it ripped it up. Do that, but reverse it. Mimi Siku. These next two movies, yeah. <laughs> These next two movies I personally enjoy, uh, again, I haven't seen him in a while. One is The Mummy, which 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 we just talked about. Yes. And The uh, Mummy Returns, which I think, you know, gets a bit of a bad rap, but I think overall was pretty good at the time. The Mummy Returns gets a bad rap for one fucking reason, and I think if we all said at the same time, we probably all the same answer. Scorpion King looking like a fucking rubber dummy. I was going to say The Rock, so that fucked it up. Yeah, well, it's the same thing. I mean, it's him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Look, looks like shit. That's the thing everyone remembers about that movie, but the rest of the movie's great. The best thing that, honestly, like, I enjoy that movie, but the best thing ever that came out of that movie was The Rock when he came back to fucking Monday Night Raw, and he kind of <laughs> made it part of his fucking character. <laughs> and Shane the Hurricane Helms was, like, mocking him about how Brendan Fraser kicked the Scorpion King's ass. <laughs> So go look that up on YouTube. It's a classic uh, behind-the-scenes moment. You got beat by Encino Man. Yeah, that is in the thrust of his, like, Hollywood heel run, and it's all good shit. I don't know. Mum- Mummy and fucking Memory Returns are fine. Yeah. Yeah. We're not talking about Tom Cruise, everybody. We're not talking about Tom Cruise. No. Jesus fucking Christ, no thank you. And then I think the one you were alluding to, Joe... Which is one I absolutely one day want to do on this show. We're doing it. We have to now. Is the Scorpion King. He did write it. Oh, he did. Oh, Oh, fuck. I didn't know he had anything to do with that movie. I thought you were going to say Van Helsing. Oh, my God. Oh, (laughs) I was leaving that for you. (laughs) And I'm like, here it comes. I'm ready for it. Van Helsing. Oh, they're they're two such good options. Uh, But Van Helsing's the good one. See, that's the thing. I like the Scorpion King. I mean, we could do G.I. Joe Rise of the Cobra. You know, that's his most recent film. (sighs) Fuck me. That movie is painful. I'm sorry. (laughs) You can keep it. (laughs) What I'm trying to say is I feel like, you know, he started off pretty strong. I think he had like one or two films before Jungle Book that were well received, but I don't remember. I didn't write it down. Hmm. But G.I. Joe, uh, I I could just leave that in uh, the bottom of the dumpster without actually watching it. Is Cobra Commander in that one? Okay, here's what happens real quick, not to get a tangent. Like, it's... Okay, you saw it, didn't you? I did. I saw it in theaters for free because I worked in a movie theater. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Did you get the t-shirt for that one, Connor? (laughs) (laughs) No, I didn't. Fuck that movie. It's stupid face. Um, That movie's terrible. That movie... Cobra shows up in the last, like, six minutes of that movie. Oh, fuck. Fuck you. And puts like a fucking mouse ball looking helmet on his head and he's like, I am Cobra Commander. And then they immediately surrender to the Joes. Stupid. Yeah. And it's Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It's hysterical. Oh, that's right. That's I remember now. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. So a couple a couple little things. Well, big things. But um, Harrison Ford was supposed <laughs> to have the original main role of this, of Finnegan. Wow. That fucking. And you could totally see why that was the case. I. Yeah, that, that means they just didn't change the script. <laughs> I just kept that line in the movie. I'll tell you what, Treat Williams is a, you know, this is going to be corny, I'm sorry, but he is a fucking treat in this film, but I he is 100% a knockoff of fucking Han Solo. But that's cool. Treat Williams is like your, your fucking, like, he's like, your star goes down, you're like, Treat, get in here. I will take Treat any day of the fucking week. No, sure, sure. God, he's awesome. I haven't seen I haven't seen a movie with him in it in a long time, and I'm so glad it was this because of how much this has kind of popped up over the years. Um, and having seen a solid Treat Williams performance from start to finish, finally, I'm like, wow, he's awesome. You gotta watch some Tales from the Crypt, dude. Uh, I, he, how many episodes of Tales from the Crypt is he in? I want to say two. He's definitely in one. He, he he's like a he's like a fucking uh, a swindler. He he like dates old women 
old widows that are like super rich and like kills them on their wedding night and steals all their money. Oh god. Yeah, it's so a real scum. It's pretty fucking good. Uh that's that's pretty those are the those are the big ones and then we can talk about some shit as we go through the film. But um but yeah, so Harrison Ford didn't take the role and the budget went down significantly significantly. So that was like a huge hit from it right out of the fucking gate, right? And then the special effects shit was another hit from it right out of the gate and then they fucking pushed it back or pushed it, yeah, they pushed it back to the next year, and then they, they missed the fucking proverbial boat. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Unfortunately for the movie, it performed like shit. But fortunately for us, we have this fucking gem of the the most delicious fucking gumbo. Whether you like food or you like cocktails, whatever you got going here. Yo, it doesn't. This movie has something for everybody. <laughs> it kind of does. Yeah, like whether it's a, whether it's a sweet fucking sizzling pot of gumbo or a nice fucking perfectly made cocktail of shit this is the film it literally when when i think of blockbuster movies this is what i think about like it's really hard at this point to get people who were in both the street fighter and the mortal Kombat movies to be in a single movie together <laughs> so you can go oh oh ooh. <laughs> oh we're right in the middle of all that shit too i i think we're only we're only a year off of mortal Kombat, right yeah and like i have never seen the actor who plays Kano in anything other than Mortal Kombat. Oh, yes, you so have. seeing him again here, I was... Wait, have I? Yesterday's Target. He was in Yesterday's Target? Yeah, Kano! Yeah, remember he shoots at fucking Daniel Baldwin when he dolphin dives into that car. Sure does. Oh, my God, that's right. Holy shit. I forgot all about him in that movie. <laughs> He's Malcolm McDowell's henchman. I don't know. For some reason, it felt so fucking in the era. I was like, I don't know. Who gives a shit about Daniel Baldwin movies like this? I was like, oh, my God, Kano's in Deep Rising. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. You kind of yeah. Um, and it's got fucking uh, who, uh I'm Star Lord. Who? Jaman Hansu. Yeah, Jaman Hansu's in this. There's a lot of people in this. I I, I feel like we, we'd almost be better served to just break it down when we get to the scene that base that essentially introduces them all, which is like the first five minutes. Let them all pop up. Yeah. All right. So let's plot crunch this. So this is a prequel to Bushwhacked. <laughs> It could be in some universes. <laughs> I was going to challenge you by saying it's either a prequel or a sequel to Titanic 2. Oh, yeah. oh, I think it's a precursor. Oh, yeah. Or you could easily say it's the it's the Titanic 3 and this uh, this asshole is uh, Shane Van Dyke's character's fucking uh, grandson or some stupid shit like that. Let me tell you something. Shane Van Dyke wishes the fucking Titanic 2 was as slick as the fucking Argonautica, okay? <laughs> Shane Van Dyke wished his effects looked even a fucking smidge as good as the effects in this film. <laughs> Yeah, that too. <laughs> this has actual water running through the fucking hallways at some point. Yeah. Yeah, it actually has people falling over railings when a collision happens. People in horrifying physical peril. Th this one woman gets fucking trampled hard. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it could be, it could be a sequel to Bushwhacked. It could be a prequel to Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it, I, I think it's all of these things, right? And then, they, and then the timeline just fucking splits because Hurt starts fucking meddling and then, you know, it all, go, you know, all goes haywire. He's like, look at how many players I have in this chess game here. Let's just divert them all in this way and some go this way your move god yeah Woody Harrelson's like let me tell you something yeah <laughs> He is God. Let me tell you something. Don't be fucking around with Kano. You get me? You gotta go to a goddamn island and fuck with and fucking fight Sonya. Fight that, fight that goddamn teacher from Billy Madison. I was trying to take a day off, okay? I was writing a new pop-up funny, and you had to go fuck with everything again. I'm nursing a fucking hangover, and you give me this shit. It's either the bartender, John Hurt, or, you know, let's go all the way back, Rawhead. One of those three is God in this universe. This is true. <laughs> I think, well, I think simultaneously, right? They're all, yeah. Possibly, possibly. So, plot crunch of this movie. It's super simple and super sweet. Uh, we have a billionaire asshole who builds the world's most elaborate, elegant ship that only the fucking 1% can go on. <laughs> and he can't afford to run it, so he hires a bunch of mercs to sink the ship, loot the ship, sink the ship, and make sure the fucking passengers are safely off the ship so he can collect the insurance money, right? So these mercs hire... Uh, this guy, Finnegan, who takes them to the ship. And that's about it. And then we get to the ship, and uh, turns out it's overrun by fucking sea monsters. What a Donald Trumpian thing to do to build a fucking ship. <laughs> <laughs> and then go, oh, I can't afford to run this piece of shit. Abandoned ship. Here's the difference. Trump just wouldn't pay them, and that would be the end of it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Like, Come sink my ship. You owe us money. No, I don't. What ship? 
What are you talking about? What money? I don't know your money. I don't have any money. Uh, I didn't take out any sea monster insurance. Sea, sea monsters are real. They're totally real. <laughs> I saw one the other day, and it told me that Hillary likes to burn children alive. <laughs> it told me about her thousands of acid-washed emails <laughs> buried in the ocean 20,000 meters underground. The Atoya family... Is fake news. We need to build a wall around sea monsters. Build a wall around the Marianas Trench. <laughs> so. Put a lid on it. Put a giant lid on it. <laughs> <laughs> Drop a giant rock into the Mar- Marianas Trench. We're going to blow up Mexico and let it fall into the fucking ocean and block the Marianas Trench so there's no more sea monsters. I think that's how you unleash the Meg. Donald. I think that's what happens, right? He's hanging out down there with the with the with the Kraken. Yeah. Well, that's how you destroy the planet by dropping a giant object into the ocean and flooding several countries. Oh my god. So he's I mean, that's Titanic too. We 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 discussed it. <laughs> yeah. So so you're telling me with this one executive order he's releasing the Kraken, releasing the Meg, causing the giant super tsunamis that destroy Titanic 2 and the world and destroy Mexico. That's amazing. All in one fell swoop, man. One fell swoop, huh? Yeah, there you go. There we go. We just, there you go, guys. Donald Trump will destroy the planet. Indisputable proof. All he needed was a small loan of $2 million from his father. And he had, he did all that. It was only a small loan. And the magic of John Hurt to bring him a giant lid. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, you know, John Hurt's a, see, John Hurt's a piece of shit, but I don't think he's conspiring with him. <laughs> Comes in like on a fucking helicopter, like Bruce Davis is in there, just staring blankly into the distance. It's a cosmic helicopter. It's this giant, comically sized lid. He opens up a fucking hole in the sky like Doctor Strange and drops a goddamn boulder out of it. <laughs> Holy cow. He wanted a lid, so I made him a lid. <laughs> It's about right, man. I think you just nailed it. Uh, so this movie opens with a I don't know. This it's like this underwater footage. Like, and you're not quite sure what it is. Like, is it a submissible? Is it a monster? We also get this brief little rundown just for everybody who's not familiar with the Marianas Trench. Doesn't it allude to basically, like, uh, the one, it alludes to, like, pressures of the deep and all kinds of stuff like that. And doesn't it allude to, to uh, sea life below a certain point in the water? Yeah, it's, it's essentially talking about how, you know, this is in the South China Sea. And, you know, the further down you get, you know, the, you know. People have sent fucking machines down there, and they've never returned, and, you know, blah, 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 deep rising. They, they can't reach the, the deepest parts of the ocean, so I guess what they're, the whole goal here is to tell you that, like, you know, there's so many unexplored places, especially in our oceans, that who knows what the fuck could be down there. And just by chance, tons of ships go missing in that vicinity for years and decades and centuries. Kick up that fucking Jerry Goldsmith score. That musical score, that musical kick is the funniest fucking thing. It was like, blam, 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 blam. I'm like, we're going to arrive at a haunted house anytime soon? Like, this fucking score is so goddamn good. Jerry Goldsmith spinning it. Yeah, it's solid. I was gifted this from my birthday one year by my buddy Chris Barr, um, and it's one of my favorite film soundtracks. <laughs> it's so good. I don't know. There's something about it. Then we go to our fucking crew of heroes, I guess we'll call them. Yeah, it's like anti-heroes, right? Oh my god, this is like a Predator lineup. <laughs> Well, first you get the people actually working on the boat. Yeah. Before you get these mercenary folk. Yeah. You got our main character, Treat Williams, who plays uh, Finnegan. Right out of the gate, Treat Williams is fucking hanging out, playing some fucking digital poker. <laughs> yeah. On his fucking boat. Right away, I was like, give me a cheating bitch moment. Give me a cheating bitch moment. And he taps it. I was like, cheating bitch? Look, there are things, there are thing nods abound in this. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, he's he's playing this solitaire while his fucking crewman, Layla, is out in this fucking torrential <laughs> storm trying to fix something. Yeah. She's like, I need a hand. He's like, ah, I'm a little busy. So he's so they're in this boat and this is this is Finnegan's boat and he has a crew of two people. Um and it's basically like a charter vessel. But it's like a it's like a little sp- it, it looks like a fucking military I don't know what. It's more stealthy than Guile's boat in Street Fighter, okay? I just put it that way. Well, yeah. It's a fucking junker. It looks like shit, yeah. but, like, it's it's also, I've just been judging from his line of work, like, I'm assuming it's supposed to be a little hard to spot yes. and uh, have to kind of get in and get out pretty fast because he does lots of uh, 
Off the books work. Yeah. He's basically like a getaway driver in a boat. Yeah. More or less. Or a, uh, let's say a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A smuggler? Yeah. Oh. (laughs) I'm pretty sure Hercules made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Get your fancy schmancy words out of (laughs) here. I just want to just real quick, before we move on, when when Harrison Ford got, I almost called him Han Solo. (laughs) My same thing. When Harrison Ford got this fucking script, was he just like, so you want me to be Han Solo, but I'm a captain of a boat? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a ship. He just walks away. You know, you're like a cowboy, but not in space. He's like, he gets up and he does a Han Solo at the Harrison Ford port, and he's like, I told you, I'm done doing this stuff. He does that fucking smile that he does. Sorry, Steve, I got a bad feeling about this, and then he just walks out the fucking door. Oh, Jesus. We get that in this, but it's totally fine. So there's Layla, which is is the female woman that works on the boat, and she, uh, it, like I said, is like trying to fix something outside, and you get this third character. My... I don't know. I, I, it's kind of close between Treat and this character, but we got Kevin J. O'Connor as Pantucci. Oh, he's great. He's fucking great, man. He is so fucking good in this movie. <laughs> you, if you, okay, if you want to write a comedy relief character, look no further. They fucking nailed it. He is perfect. He's both equal parts funny as he is compelling as he is pertinent to the plot. He's not irritating, like, no. cause, which is funny because the mummy, like, his job is to be so sniveling and and uh, cowardly yeah. that you can't wait to see him get just destroyed. He's also a fucking, uh, you know, a henchman of Emotep, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, and in this movie, he is so sympathetic and so immediately likable um, that, like, right away I was like, oh, please, don't touch him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he definitely is, you know, he has one of those voices that I could see some people just right off the bat saying, ah, fuck this guy. But like me, I thought it was charming. Oh, man. Yeah, he's got that going on the whole movie. Ow, 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 ow. Can't even really do his voice kind of, but it kind of sounds like this, man, I'm telling you. It's very weak sounding. He looks like he's constantly tired. Jesus Christ, he sounds like fucking Woody Allen. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about your boat or whatever. Then we get this fucking crew of mercs led by Wes Studi, Sagat himself. Oh yeah, Tiger. Yeah, this it's, it's a room full of beef. <laughs> uh, yeah, Wes Studi uh, as, uh, I forgot his character's name. Hanover. He makes them pretzels, man. He's probably just gonna get called Sagat the entire time, guys. So let's be real. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Sagat for sure. That's, yep. Uh, and then making his second appearance, right? Second? Uh, Jason Fleming as Mulligan. Yeah, yeah. he's here, fucking Calibos himself. We have Clifton Pal as uh, Mason, mm-hmm. who, like, I've seen in so many things and can't off the top of my head tell you anything that's like... He's like one of those characters that you've referred to in previous episodes, Connor, where he's like one of those that guys that you've seen him in a ton of shit. He's a that guy, yeah. And then we get fucking uh, Jimin Hansu, which we already said, who was just most recently in, what, Shazam? Was he in Shazam? Yeah, he plays fucking... He has the power of Shazam before he gives it to What's-His-Face. That's right, he... Wait a minute, I think you're right at that one, but he's also... Uh, he was in Captain Marvel and he was in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Oh, yeah, well, he plays the same character in both, yeah. You also have, like, a... a early appearance of uh cliff curtis as mamuli yes yeah i was just gonna bring that up which i was kind of shocked by why i don't know i just i guess like he's one of those actors that i've only seen like in the last 10 years so it's like seeing him in this i was like oh wow he was acting in 98 i guess he would be acting wouldn't he we, we talked about kane already trevor goddard as fucking t-ray yep um and there's one more but i didn't get i didn't catch the name or the actor there's one more Guy. Well, he's he's it's Billy, but he's played by a guy called Clint Curtis. I don't know who that is. <laughs> he doesn't have a wiki entry, so I don't know who that is either. Um, I didn't look him up because I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> anyway, Billy, he's he he'll get his shining fucking moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So basically all these mercs, so this is the our band of mercs, right? And uh, as Connor so beautifully put it, our fucking predator. Uh, gang it so is and they have a fucking gear ups like moment and like they're all fucking exchanging quips and drawing weapons on each other it's i'm like you're i'm like your predator mercs and i love it for how quotable this movie is again like it, it just hits all of those notes like and it's not like all the quotes in this movie like aren't shitty either like no it reminded me of aliens yeah and predator and all of yes. uh, all those yesteryear fucking action films that are so good so so these guys so these guys are on a mission to to sink this fucking ship right but we only we only find that out because our boy benny here pantucci is you know he he overhears a conversation they're having and he checks their cargo 
And they have fucking live torpedoes just in these <laughs> massive crates. Hey, man, if the cash is there, we do not care. That is uh, Finnegan's motto, for those who need to know. Um, th- yeah, and there's like, like I think he says there's like eight or nine of them. I'm like, good God, you're planning on a like just annihilating this ship. <laughs> there ain't nukes or nothing, man, but the blast will sure make your butt pucker. Like, every fucking word out of this guy's mouth is gold. <laughs> so yeah, so he's so he finds the missiles in the in the cargo and they're not supposed to they're not supposed to fucking be fucking around. And he, even before Sagat's like, "You got any questions, Finnegan?" and he's like, "Nope. Uh I shut up and do my job." So I shut up and do my job. See ya. Uh so Mantucci's like poking around, finds the fucking missiles. Fucking Jimon Hansu, his name's Vivo in this movie. He fucking grabs <laughs> <laughs> and throws him into the fucking the God. This sequence is hysterical to me because it just results in like it. It's like grown up bullying. Oh yeah. Well, one one dude even says he's like, can't believe his shit. It's like being back in high school. They throw this <laughs> motherfucker into. Uh, I don't even know what what it, the brig, I guess. Yeah. And uh, I, don't, I don't know parts of his ship. I'm stupid. Oh man, my dad can never listen to this episode. He would shame me if I if I said that sentence out loud. Wherever they're fucking hanging out, the whole the whole gang of uh, marks. The basement. Yeah, the bottom of the ship. <laughs> the basement of the ship. <laughs> so they throw him into the fucking they throw him where all these guys are hanging out, and they beat the shit out of this dude. They, they, it's they they just swarm and start just dropping fists on him. It's the funniest looking fucking thing. Oh man, fun. Fun fact, he, so, uh, Kevin had, like, a, a bunch of padding all over him, right? And these dudes were really, like, punching and kicking him. And they did the scene so many times that, like, he still ended up with, like, bruises at the end of the day. Oh, shit. Yeah, he was fucked up. I don't want that group of guys to to shoot beyond me. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> Hell no! And he still came back and did the mummy. He must have just, like, you know, really forgave uh, Mr. Summers. Hey, man, if the cash is there, he does not care. So, he... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking a. So, so uh, Layla and Finnegan hear all this happening on their on their headset, and Layla's like, "All right, well, you're gonna go down there and help him." And he's like, "Fuck no, those guys are dangerous." <laughs> <laughs> I love this character so much. <laughs> Again, he's like the best anti-hero like ever, like ever. Hey, absolutely not. He's on his own. Yeah, fuck him. He did it. Well, then, then Treat finally gets up and he comes in with this fucking like three pronged harpoon gun. Oh my god, yeah. And and it's a shot of fucking West Studi just standing there about to like blow uh, Kevin J. O'Connor's head off. And these fucking harpoon bolts just hit the wall behind him and treat standing there like, yeah, we can't be doing this. I kind of <laughs> need that guy. You beat my engine man to death. It's going to take us a hell of a lot longer. <laughs> yeah. But the pisser is they all take all their guns that they're about to shoot fucking uh, Patucci, Pantucci with and they all aim them at uh, fucking Finnegan. Yeah, but he's got he's got balls of fucking platinum. Oh, my God. He's like, yeah, it's not a democracy. My boat. So, uh, yeah, let him go. We don't vote here. Yeah, he's like, one more time for the hearing impaired. And he fucking clocks fucking uh, Manuli in the face. To uh, uh, What's his face? And then fucking points the, points the gun at one of the dudes, and then they all draw their weapons. It's a fucking tense scene, man. Yeah. Um. Anyway, he gets Mantucci out of there. And then as he's walking back up the stairs, he goes, that's one more year off my life. Yeah. <laughs> I love when when uh, Mason comes up with with Hanover, and he's like, "Oh, you you Finnegan, man! I heard a lot about you." And he's like, "Oh, my reputation precedes me." He's like, "Oh, like a fine." Oh, he goes, uh, "He goes, uh, I thought you'd be older." And he goes, "Oh, like a fine wine. I'm aging gracefully." He's like, "Fine wine, my ass. More like a fucking keg of beer to me." <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's great. Then we go to this fucking cruise ship. Oh, we sure do. I'm so glad we only spent a few minutes with it. Like, I'm like the way they introduce this, the, the passengers and everybody else is like, look at all these red shirts. Red shirts, rich fucks. Oh my God. I'm just like, look, it's the 1% all in a boat. Yeah. All in one boat. These are the parents from Baby's Day Out fucking times 100. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I hope that. I hope that's canonical, because fuck them. Yeah. Well, that's where they were when the baby got taken. When Joey Pants fucking took the baby. Yeah, that's it. They're on a fucking cruise ship. So Anthony Held, a.k.a. Dr. Chilton, doing his fucking speech about how he's so happy all these fucking one percenters could be on his boat. Yeah. And I always had a dream that... <laughs> Uh, I, ever since I was a little boy, that I could build a boat that was only for the super mega ultra rich. <laughs> <laughs> he sure does. Like, give me a fucking break, buddy. That's, okay, this, this is where all those packages are coming from that arrive exactly on 10 o'clock. 
because there's ten thousand dollars in each one. Oh yeah. And Daniel Stern has to collect them all because he's on the boat. Yeah. I think you cracked it. That's I couldn't quite figure out where you're going with the Bushwax prequel thing, and now <laughs> now I've had I have enough breadcrumbs to get back home. Sure does. There he, there it is. Do you have enough breadcrumbs for one Famka Jansen, who makes her triumphant debut? In the MDU. Oh, yeah, man. My God, this woman is, like, timeless. This is, like, right around X-Men, man. Yeah, like, we're only a couple years off. Um, X-Men was 2000, wasn't it? Sounds right. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're almost there. But, like, this is the movie that I fell in love with her with. I was like, who is that? She's amazing in this movie. Yeah, and she's great, too. Straight up. She was just in GoldenEye, what? That was 95, right? Oh, I keep forgetting she was Xenia. Yeah, she plays the chick that, like, squeezes the dudes to death with her legs. Z- uh, Xenia on a top, because that movie couldn't resist one more pussy galore esque pun. Oh yeah, well there you go. She is one of the better, I will say, actor or not actor. She's one of the better characters in this film for sure. Yeah, because I don't feel like she's ever a damsel in distress. Like she's no. there in her own accord, and she's kind of like she's very capable of handling herself, and she's very fucking funny. Like she definitely, you know, later in the movie has a bit of a team up with Treat, but it's predominantly like survival. Two-sided. Like they're both defending each other. Yeah, but she's a fucking felon, dude. She is a criminal. <laughs> In this film. She's Catwoman without the fucking costume. Yeah, she somehow managed to get her ass on the fucking one percenter ship and to, to rob them fucking blind <laughs> is why she's there. Well, because Chilton gives this fucking speech and then she comes up and she's like talking with a fake French accent and she bumps into this captain and just steals his wallet, no problem. Yep. And I guess this guy just keeps his security clearance card in his wallet because uh, she gets it and she goes to open the vault like in the next scene. Yeah, and but they catch her. And they end up, like, throwing her in the fucking brig. Like, so Canton's there, the, uh, and he's, like... Uh, Canton being the uh, Chilton. Yes, Chilton is Canton. Canton is the proprietor of the ship. Canton is Chilton. Chilton is uh, Einhorn. And then all of a sudden, Fam K. Jans is in a shower, burning her fucking clothes. <laughs> anyway, she's breaking into this fucking vault, and Canton comes up and, like subdues like her his goons like subdue her and he's like he's like oh look at this a list of fucking charges and he's like he like runs down the fucking list of all the crimes she's committed she's wanted in like a like three different countries like this chick has fucking done some hardcore shit attempted murder she says ha ex-boyfriend <laughs> and it, i i love this okay you have to see the fucking movie but he can makes this face and she replies with, what? And I don't know why. It's just one of those funny things that I laugh at every fucking time when I see this movie. And he he presents himself as a douchebag right away. Like, forget about the speech about ever since he was a kid, he wanted to just make this cruise ship for the ultra rich. Like, if that wasn't already enough to make you hate this guy, he goes up to her, she starts mouthing off, and just slaps her in the face. Oh, oh he yeah. fucking hits her. So this, this is the first in- implication that we get this guy's a fucking sadist. Or, or, or a fucking masochist, excuse me. Um... Because he's a fucking piece of shit. Um, and, it, and like, you think he's just an asshole, like, later on, but then, like, towards, we'll get to it, but, like, towards the end of the movie, you're like, what the fuck is this guy's malfunction, man? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this guy, this guy's got some, got some fucking demons he's concealing very well. Yeah, he's got some women-hating fucking shit going on in his brain. Like, weird fucking sexual gross shit anyway but uh at some point he's like uh they're like oh throw in the brig and she's like you can't throw me in the brig i'm a lady and he's like well you're no lady and then she proceeds to fucking feast on hors d'oeuvres and champagne which is not a bad gig she she gets thrown in the brig and is like oh there's food in here and has the fucking time of her life in the fucking brig well think about it man you know as far as she's concerned she's either gonna break out of there or she's going to jail so she might as well enjoy it for a little while she pops open a bottle of wine she's got the hors d'oeuvres laid out in front of her She's got boxes of fruit behind her. She's fucking set. She's taking jello shots. Cheers. Yeah. And then we're introduced to one of my favorite characters of the movie, the Chinese M1L1 triple assault rifle (laughs) that's watertight and has auto cooling. What the fuck are these sci-fi poppycock weapons? I love them. The Terminator's robot dick is so hard right now. (laughs) He wishes he had this thing. Those things look like, they look like doom weapons. Dude, they are so, they are so fucking cool. I'm not really a gun guy, but I don't know. There's something about them. I mean, the characters in the movie, you know, I talk about the Terminator. I don't know where my brain goes there for, but they have shit. They are in love with these things. Jason Fleming wants to fuck his gun 
throughout this entire film, okay? Like, he's pressing against his face, he's making little faces at it, like he's stroking it and rubbing it. They make McConaughey and Reign of Fire look like a chump with the way he was straddling that tank. Please. The, these guys are, like, the most misogynistic fucking roughneck pieces of shit, like, ever. Well, Mamouli, Mamouli's talking about all the girls he's fucked, and he's like, I gotta get one from each country. Yeah, he's like, I gotta... <laughs> <laughs> That's a great conversation because they have they have a small argument whether Australia is a country, a continent, or a stupid island. Yeah, and it turns out it's a stupid island. It all leads to him saying to Layla because she looks she's like Asian, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I haven't fucked a South Korean yet. Yeah, haven't done Korean. Oh, they get they get these guns that Joe's talking about, and while they're looking it over, like half of them go outside like, on the front of the boat, and, uh, Treat's like, yeah, what the hell are they doing? And, uh, they're fucking literally installing this torpedo launcher on the front of his boat. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of him! <laughs> Who's putting holes in my boat? I didn't say you could put holes in my boat! Yeah, just do it right in front of him! Yep. And then fucking Sagat comes in, and he's like, oh, right, we'll take over from here, thanks. <laughs> Don't ask any questions. I'm hey, man. I would have loved to see, and I get that the rest of this movie wouldn't work if this actually happened, but I wanted to see, like, them fire one of these fucking things off the front of his boat right oh man because as as they're a pro because the whole thing is tree is being paid to bring them to a specific location but he doesn't know the location right and because he doesn't ask we spoiled it a little bit but it's easier just to tell it that way they're going to the boat is the point right we cut back to the boat and we get that fucking submersible uh view again coming up from the the bottom of the ocean. Don't we get the, uh, the, the, the technical mess first? Oh, yeah, you're right, my bad. Yeah, a pair of hands, like, not like two severed hands, like a body. It's kind of like the ham herder helper guy. Yeah, yeah, it's like a giallo scene where you see fucking hands. <laughs> Thing, that guy that did Thing, we've talked about him before, Idle Hands, go listen to it. <laughs> but uh, a faceless figure comes into, like, the control room and just starts, like, fucking slapping CD-ROMs into fucking computers and just, like, uh, you know, uh, sci-fi hacks this whole thing and just shuts the whole boat down. Oh, it's vi virus jargon. Faceless person, but very clearly someone that in a previous scene was wearing a fucking white suit. Yeah, it's obviously someone in the crew. But also... It's very obvious that whoever this person is knows exactly what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, right. They're 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 pulling a Dennis Nedry essentially. Oh yeah, straight up. And on the and on the boat before they actually install the torpedo launcher, Jason Fleming is actually installing a similar looking CD onto the torpedoes themselves. Right. At some point, he kisses his finger and then press the arm button. No, he he licks it and then does that. That's right. He licks his finger. Yeah, because this this character is is like he fetishizes. It's a very subtle performance, kind of, because he's not really doesn't have too much screen time. But like, this dude fetishizes weaponry, and it's kind of fantastic. I honestly, and this is the one thing I'm gonna dog this movie on a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. I really feel like he was trying to do the fucking Alien Two, uh, what's his face, the uh, Bill Paxton character, like his spin on that kind of character, except it doesn't land. Kinda. He was kind of wacky at times, like. Yeah. Anyway. But um, so the ship gets sabotaged, and like everything goes down, like every. The fucking engines, the radar, every vital system the ship needs to function, period, goes down. Except for the lights and the music and everything else. Everybody's still having a fucking blast and they have no idea that the ship has gone down. Why the hell would he turn the electricity off on the gates? I, I don't know. He, he fucking, I hope the raptor fences are still on. Let me tell you something, Joe. To get Jurassic Park up and running, we're gonna need Dennis Nedry. I can't get the Argonautica back online without Canton. <laughs> Whatever that white rabbit object was, it did it all. Please! I, I'm sick of this hack of crap. Please! God damn it! God damn it! I wish Sam was in... No, I don't. I think that would take me out of the whole movie. But anyway. Yeah, well, he had another uh, sea-related sci-fi monster movie to, to go be in shortly after this. <laughs> So he probably would have had a similar fate in this movie. He just got fucking eaten by a tentacle. You think water's fast? You should see ice. Anyway, shock eaten. So as the ship goes down, uh, that's when you get the uh, the quick POV shot, and then we get like uh, we get a very nervous crew member who's oh, like yeah. barely making it through the radar. He's like, okay, something huge is like uh, up rising from the depths, and they're like, it's a whale. And he's like, uh, at thirty knots? At thirty knots? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's a pretty effective scene though, because he's like, it's fifteen hundred feet. It, it, it's a thousand. It's 500. Uh, 180 meters, 100 meters. Yeah, it's, it's it also reminds me of the uh, the Dallas sequence from Alien. Yeah, it's really good. And, like, Canton's like, oh, it must be a pot of whales. He's like, I don't think so. Canton almost slips. He's like, oh, it must be a torpedo. I mean, a pot of whales. <laughs> 
I mean, why would it be a torpedo? He walks out of the room. <laughs> what? Where, I don't know what you're talking about. Bye. I gotta go have my teeth pulled. Sweating like a motherfucker, wiping it away with a handkerchief. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I almost blew it. So you see the camera POV of um, this mysterious monster smack the fucking uh, propellers of the ship and stop it dead in its fucking tracks. So imagine <laughs> a, a cruise ship just stopping abruptly and everything just fucking pushing forward at like 70 miles an hour. Here's what I can tell you I don't have to imagine. I was hanging out at the front of the crew of a cruise ship at the bottom of it. Not the bottom bottom, but like one of the lower decks the casino was, and I was fucking feeling that. Oof. I don't want to know what this feels like. <laughs> I will, you know, I haven't seen a ton of cruise liner disaster films, I guess I'll call them. We've watched now, I guess, two on this show. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say it's in my top three that I've seen. It's, it's up there with Titanic and the Poseidon Adventure. Oh. Oh, these people go fucking flying. Man, this, it feels so real. Yeah, because, like, it's, no one's like, oh, my God, what happened? We have to make sense of this. People are no. like, fucking run. No one's running around the Tropicana fucking casino. No, it's pure fucking anarchy. There's people falling off balconies through fucking tables and fucking getting smashed between things. Glass. I couldn't believe how many people fell through fucking glass. Well, you got to figure all that shit's just around. And then it, oh, yeah. And then fucking the people running down the hallways, I guess, to get back to their room or whatever. Um, there's this sequence where we get like these fast cuts of these people running down this hallway and this fucking woman gets trampled and her face gets stomped into the ground it is so well done yeah it's amazing it looks so convincing i for a second i was like oh my god was that real like you feel it she looks up at the camera so you can see her face very clearly and then a foot comes in the back of her head and just smushes it right back into the carpet again i think already sean just said this but like this is probably one of the best um panic disaster on a cruise ship scenes. Yeah, and it's like 90 seconds long. Yeah, it's pretty fucking long. We even get something better than that because we get a scene that a movie we just did recently aped hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> It had to have. Yes. Mayor Stahl is fucking saying hello to us, guys. <laughs> because this poor woman runs into the fucking bathroom, and uh, it's the first time you kind of, like, get this idea that this tentacle creature, whatever the fuck it is, is, uh, you know, obviously, like, the audience at home knows that something has, has attacked this ship, but uh, you kind of hear it, like, moving through the pipes, almost like a little Draniac-ish. Sort of, yeah. Um, And this poor woman gets sucked through this fucking toilet. Bit in the ass and fucking pulled right down there right down the drain this was one of the scenes i saw on tv all the time did it have the spray of blood yes it did okay well there that's intact it had that it had more than fucking ghost shark did it was just the, that brown mess that came out of the fucking toilet fun fact too they at one point they tried to do a pg-13 version of this oh fuck off no way and a pg version of it really and yeah and i'm like who what asshole would try to cut this down to that. Like, I don't get it. When you bring fucking Robotine and ILM on, like, you better be showing me that fucking good stuff. Oh, yeah. And they do. So one thing of note, though, when this boat gets hit, besides all the people going flying and shit blowing up all over the place, uh, a bunch of the boats, the lifeboats, and I guess they have speedboats. I don't know if they're all supposed to be doubling as lifeboats or they're just, like, additional transports. Fall into the water. Yeah, they might just be like luxury boats that you can rent off. I mean, we're t again, we're talking about right. like super uber rich motherfuckers luxury boat. Like stop at a coral reef and then fucking hang out on the speedboat. Exactly. Like I feel like they anchor and they rent the fucking speedboat and they like go out. Yeah. But it's important because the next scene involves said... Uh speedboat. Sure does. Yeah, because they're, they're uh, Finnegan and his crew are riding... The radar is out for them, too, because it's been malfunctioning the whole movie. Um, and it's, like, it's fucking storming outside. Uh, they can't see shit, and they ram right through one of these fucking speedboats. Dude, I, I was, uh, the first explosion with the fucking cruise ship, I was not ready for how good it was. And then this explosion, I, my fucking jaw was on the floor. <laughs> And it's really, really well done. Yeah, this boat flies into fucking pieces. Yeah. It flies into pieces, and Finch, uh, Treat's boat goes fucking kablooey in like 10 spots. Yeah, there's a huge hole in the fucking, where the engine room is, um, and also right where the, um, the engine room and the, and the cargo hold are like the same fucking room, right? Yeah, or, or very close to each other. Same deck. Um, none of the torpedoes get hit, thankfully, which one of the mercs points out, but Pantucci and Treat and, uh... Layla are all looking at it, and two of their main engines are fucked. 
and uh, they're they're just basically like, yeah, you know, we can maybe run them for like fifteen minutes, but uh, we can't really do much with them at the moment. Yeah, and then treats like, what the fuck? How did we? <laughs> There's no way like the speedboat could get out this far. Like, where the fuck are we going? How did this get? How did this happen? And then that's when Sagat's like, yeah, uh, we're going to this cruise ship, so shut the fuck up. And they commandeer the ship, and they and they kind of force uh mantucci to like fix it enough so that they can get to uh the cruise ship pantucci's like um you know he fixes what he can and then he like tells finnegan like all the bombs are live and shit so he didn't they don't know i can't i can't do it yeah <laughs> well then they, they they finally get up to this boat and they see like it in the distance with like essentially like only the uh, emergency lights on they're like something looks off but uh we're still we, we're still doing this job and so they uh they fucking approach and and uh west duty just goes to to uh finnegan he's like yeah uh i'm gonna need uh you and uh, the grease monkey and uh treat williams is like no no we, we we stay three together we're always together he's like pulls a fucking gun on him he's like yeah no we're doing it my way now and he's like okay you'll be sticking with me so they take him on the boat to get i think they didn't they bring they bring them with him so that they can get the parts because there's a machine shop on the boat yeah because i think i think joey uh, uh joey makes a point to say like yeah if i had some time in the machine shop i could bring some stuff back yeah yeah, and then they can do their job and get the fuck out of there. They leave Billy with Layla on Treat's boat, mm-hmm. and they all go into the other one. Yeah, yeah. But th- I think that's a pretty good fucking reason to get Treat and uh, Pantucci off the boat to get on the. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't feel like I don't. I don't feel like anything in this movie feels feels really contrived. No, exactly. I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it's very natural. Also, Treat drops a fucking banger of a line when they're getting on this boat because they have like fucking like rap grappling hooks. They have grappling hooks, so they shoot onto the boat to get in. And Treat goes, uh, oh, what are they going to attack us with? Margaritas and tanning oil? Because they have these fucking machine guns. <laughs> he's like, they're passengers. What are you doing? I don't think you're going to need your guns. Yeah, he's, that's what he says. Um, But yeah, when they get in there, it's a fucking, for lack of a better term, it is a ghost ship. They kick the fucking door down and everybody's gone and they come barreling in screaming. Yeah, I do love when they get up, though, after like the grappling hook sequence and Joey goes, well, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they kick the d- the doors open to the ballroom, and it's just like they're like, Rah! yeah, everybody freeze. <laughs> uh, where is everybody? Yeah, there's nobody there. Uh, one thing of note, though, they do see like blood all the fuck over the place. Yeah, because yeah, they like it's, which I like the fact that like that is a detail I for some reason I really enjoyed because like the way the way these people got tossed around this fucking ship, like. There might, like, I'm not, su- I'm kind of surprised nobody's dead in that room. Well, we'll get to a reason why that doesn't make any, why, why there's nobody in there. But for now, we we're, we don't know. Now that I think about it, yeah, there'd be, yeah, there's a reason why there wouldn't be any dead people. But, like, um, like, the amount of people who got really injured during that whole thing would have been catastrophic. Oh, yeah. And even if they were dead, I feel like they'd still be not there, if you get what I'm saying. It, 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 it's, like, kind of like that age-old, you know horror thriller kind of thing like i just recently watched uh, event horizon and it's like when they get on that fucking ship it's like yeah. where the hell is everybody and then after they're on there and they're fucked already because they can't get off it's like oh oh god yeah it's called good storytelling yeah <laughs> <laughs> this fucking elevator starts coming up and i'm sitting there thinking all right so uh you know you guys got your guns drawn because there's about to be a dead body with a t-shirt on that says ho ho, ho i've got a machine gun now motherfucker <laughs> Ho, ho, ho. I don't think there's anything in this fucking elevator, though. I don't know. Sig Valton's there, man. He's making clocks and shit. <laughs> True. Uh, no, there's no one. It's just, it's just more blood. Yeah. Um, and that's when, that's when Treat Williams drops, drops evidence that he was supposed to be Harrison Ford. Yeah. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> I do like that it, he's like, they set it up, he's like, I have a bad feeling about this, and it opens, there's nothing, and he goes, and he like sighs, he's like, oh, good. Like... <laughs> <laughs> then a firework or some shit or Slimer on the side fucking makes a noise. <laughs> and these fuckers just start unloading on this, like, decoration in the corner. Yeah. Oh, they go full cleaning lady uh, uh, Ghostbusters on, like, whatever the fuck. Like, whoa! Oh, no, this is this is Egon Spangler shooting that fucking table of liquor. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 nice shooting text. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, the, 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 the fucking little maid crawls out. She's like, what the hell are you doing? And then they realize, yeah, we really like shooting these, and then fucking... And they just shoot more! Yeah. yeah. And then fucking Sagat comes in, he's like, you morons, what are you doing? 
It's so fucking good. It's so good. They're like, yeah. Shooting the shit out of their ship. Well, it's the first time. It's the first time they get to fire those things. Yeah. And all of them get like insta boners. Yeah. They're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then when you watch these things get fired, it's like pulse rifle all over again. Oh, yeah. But with no uh, ammo counter. Yeah. Well, th- yeah. And also, like, we didn't describe these things real quick. But, like, think of, like, like your standard movie, like AR-15 or something like that, except it has a fucking miniature, like, m- like chain gun barrel at the front. It's got a rotating barrel. It's like a handheld Gatling gun rifle. It's like that thing on the, what is that thing from RoboCop called? Um, oh, the Ed 209? Yeah, it, it, it's basically if you took that thing it shoots that fucking executive with and you put it in someone's hands. Yeah, the fucking arm? Yeah, yeah. It's got a scope and everything and like, yeah, it's, it looks awesome. Um, So yeah, they get massive boners from finding this thing and, went and Sagat comes in. He's like, cut the shit out, you idiots. Then we go back to Famka and she she basically got knocked out by this fucking furniture falling on her but uh she gets up and breaks out of the room like so fucking easily i'm like why did you even like entertain just hanging out in there i don't know man she had food and booze fuck it yeah good enough she fucking <laughs> stick she sticks like a she sticks like a fucking hairpin in in this circuitry and the door opens she's very crafty again she's catwoman then we go to the the bridge and you know again they're just kind of looking around trying to figure out what happened and then we uh we have a quick scene back at uh, treat's boat where uh rodney dangerfield pops out of the fucking water <laughs> yeah yeah. I swear to God, this dummy, this dead dummy looks like fucking Rodney Dangerfield. If it fucking floats in, he's like, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> Get no respect. Was that after he did the uh, triple Lindy and he fucking hit the water and he didn't survive? <laughs> He did a fucking he did a fucking Olympic dive off the boat and split in half when he hit the water. That's how he died. Yeah. That is how Rodney Dangerfield died in the MDU, everybody, okay? Doing a fucking quadruple flip off the top of a cruise ship. I mean that movie ends, he does the triple Lindy and then you know, credits, so we don't know. It's canon now. That's that's it's fact. Somehow he got from a swimming pool to the South Pacific Ocean, but uh <laughs> You never know in the MDU, man. A portal could open wherever. Yeah, it's true. No, it just works like Camp Crystal Lake, where it just has, like, an inlet that leads out to the ocean. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> to China. Sure. There's a cave that leads to the sea. It's the same way Rump got to L.A. Well, uh, you know, that, that's a little bit more complicated. You know, super tsunamis were involved. We know, we're not going to go into it. <laughs> so, so Layla's uh, trying to fix this hole in the boat, right? And uh, Billy's up on deck, and he's just like... I don't know what you're fixing, by the way, because this is a big motherfucking hole. This hole is the size of my body. Yeah, she's got, like, she's got like shrapnel and metal pieces she's trying to heat up and kind of patch this fucking hole together. And uh, the, the boat's filling up with water, so they have a pump that keeps pumping it out. And this fucking body slips in... Fucking Rodney slips in this hole... Um, and he's like, hey, it's, it's better than my wife, or whatever. Have you seen my legs? <laughs> some, insert Rodney Dangerfield joke about his wife and a giant pussy. He's, like, tugging his collar while he's, like, floating in, and he's all fucking dead and bloated. He's like, hey, how you doing? So I was going down with my wife the other day, and I said, jeez, you got a big pussy, jeez, you got a big pussy. And then I float through a fucking so- The hole was the size of a pussy, you get it? We get it, Rodney. That's what happens when Shane Black writes your material. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> She's trying to fucking seal up the boat, and, um... Body comes in and she ends up getting fucking uh, pulled out and killed. So these creatures, little spoiler, they're like ten- they're like tentacles, right? I think we've already mentioned it. Yeah, you don't see it, but she gets grabbed from the ass and gets pulled out this fucking hole in the boat and this fucking dummy like smacks its fucking head on the hole and shit it's very like it's super visceral do you think rodney went into a uh, cop of feel i mean he was that kind of guy he totally was hey baby where are you going hey i'm just gonna lay here all stiff and whatnot i'm not talking about my body who just a part of it. You're giving me rigor mortis with that. I was gonna say, the way people are off sometimes this movie without showing you exactly what happens to them or exactly what's grabbing them works every fucking time. Every time. I'm gonna repeat what Joe said earlier. That is just good storytelling. That is effective horror. Yeah. Yeah. It, it keeps the air of mystery while delivering the goods at the same time. Because I get the trauma, but I'm not seeing the source, and I'm like, oh, God! Like, <laughs> Well, because if you go into this movie, and I'll reference Rain of Fire briefly, but like, remember I said during that episode, how if I didn't know this that Reign of Fire was about dragons destroying the world, the beginning of that film would be way more effective. Right. Now, I went into this totally blind yeah so oh shit that's right i you know i had an inkling that you know i had an idea that was some kind of monster like i'm not stupid but i didn't know what this fucking thing was for like another 15 minutes oh man this is that i was so excited 
because uh, we were talking about this in the chat, you know, before we did this, and Sean had not seen any trailers or knew what the fuck it, exactly the movie was, and I tried so hard to make sure that you watched this fucking totally virgin, and I'm so glad you did. Yeah, you know, just like a virgin pina colada, it was... Uh... <laughs> An effective way of going about it. it. It definitely increased my enjoyment of the film overall. So, yeah, uh, Layla dies, and then we go back to the boat. Uh, well, the we're going, we, back, we go back to the cruise ship. We go from one boat to a boat. We go from the boat, the little boat, to the big boat, and they're in the machine shop. Um, And uh, I believe uh, Finnegan and Joey are kind of, uh, they're hammering on some metal. They're clanging and banging, as uh, The Rock would say. <laughs> uh, and uh, they're, they're left with uh, Kano and... Uh, Manuli. Mamuli, yeah. I'm just going to call him Kano, because... Well, T Ray's a great name, but I like Kano better. Yeah. Fucking Mamuli, because he's going on about how he wants to get laid all the time. He just finds, like, the people in the workshops, like, fucking porn corner that they have. <laughs> the universe <laughs> called out to him. Like, <laughs> he's like, I gotta fuck every one of these fucking porn stars on this wall. He's a walking boner. Like, all these guys are such, they're, like, they're horny for something. Yeah. Um, and Kano's horny for Australia. This guy's horny for women. Jason Fleming's horny for his gun. And, uh, Pantucci's horny for a peanut, apparently. That he drops in the water. <laughs> And Treat Williams is just like, what the fuck are you doing right now? Peanut? And he's like, yeah, peanut. <laughs> and he drops a fucking peanut in the water. <laughs> uh, there's this great exchange between Pantucci and fucking uh, T-Ray here. Because T-Ray's like, well, maybe maybe they all jumped overboard. And he's like, <laughs> and Pantucci's like, holy shit, he's right. He's like, you know, you're right. He's like, yeah, I could just see the last asshole in like, well, Jim, we forgot the lifeboats. I guess we're just going to have to swim for it. <laughs> In the middle of the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Like, why the fuck wouldn't you go in the lifeboat? And then and T Ray basically like puts his gun in his fucking face, and he's like, "Yeah, say that again, motherfucker." And he's like, "I don't like you." And he's like, "You don't even know me." You don't even know me. He says. <laughs> then we cut to, oh shit, uh, Kano heard a sound. So uh, my watch, uh, I'm just, I'm just looking at it, waiting for him to die. Yeah, he sure does. Oh yeah, he's the, uh, he's the. Uh, well, Layla was the first, but he's the, uh, he's the first moron essentially. You get your first full glimpse. Well, you get your first glimpse of what this creature may or may not yeah, be. Yeah, and it's like, right away, you're like, what the fuck is that? Because either you can mistake it for a serpent covered in spikes or a tendril or something, but yeah, it is a nasty-looking, spiky, slithery thing working through the vents, and he doesn't quite see it, but we do. Yep. Well, he chases after it, and you, you, know, you get a kind of a fake-out where some fucking tubing falls out of the ceiling, try to jump scare you, and then uh, as he turns around, this fucking thing just comes at him from under the water. It's so good because, again, so up to this point, we just keep seeing people getting pulled out of frame and shit, but it works every time. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but like when he gets, when, when Layla and him both get pulled out of frame, your brain is filling in a gap because it's not just the obvious, like, like, Layla, you said, like, there was a dummy that you see for a split second, like, fold in half or something like that. Yeah. And with him, like, he gets yanked between, like, two pipes that you couldn't fit through as a regular, like... No. On your own will, you couldn't fit through, and you hear it. It goes like, boom, and he goes right fucking through him. And there's a flash of blood on the ceiling, and then, like, his gun goes flying and lands on the fucking table where Pantucci and Finnegan are working. Like, you know he was instantly pulverized. Yeah. Um, but reality, though, he's fine. He just lost an eye. <laughs> He's hanging out on an old fucking creepy boat with a sorcerer. He's gonna go hang out with Goro and show Goro how little manners he has. He fucking eats a turkey leg. He, uh, you know, he swam in the ocean and he landed on this fucking island about a mile out. Yep. Yeah, it could be the same island. We don't know that. It could have been Goro walking through the forest. It's Shang Tsung's island, for sure. So, yeah, uh, T-Ray's gone. And Mamuli's freaking out immediately, which, to be fair... Guy's an asshole, but I don't blame him. Yeah, but he fucking blames Finnegan and Pantucci. He's like, what'd you do to him? What'd you do to T-Ray? He's like, what the? Are you fucking crazy, dude? It wasn't us. Don't they react like, what are you at? Yeah, they're like, what are you out of your mind? We've been standing right here the whole time. <laughs> yeah, while you were oogling your fucking porno corner. Yeah. It cuts away because he, he does get grabbed. We'll, we'll come back to it briefly because there's, there's a scene in between here that I feel like you kind of have to go a little bit in order here for it to flow properly. Yes, I agree. Because you go back to the vault, and, uh, you know, Famka, who you, we haven't brought up yet, but her name in this movie is Trillian. Yeah. And uh, she's at the vault basically trying to continue what she was doing before she was caught. And uh, as she goes to open it, West Studi and uh, a few of the other mercs fucking come in and confront her. And I'm like, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, she takes, he takes the card and he, like, 
chokes her up against the wall and she's like, where's the other passenger? She's like, I don't know, sleeping? So God pulls a fucking <laughs> pistol on her and she's like, no, I really don't know. Yeah. So then fucking Vivo, uh, uh, Jimin Hansu fucking goes up to the fucking vault, slips this fucking credit card in and opens the vault. Oh my God. And he's like, oh, money, 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 money. And the fucking vault opens and Canton comes out fucking blazing with an axe and plants it right in his fucking forehead and he is dead. Dead. Uh, okay, you get either, like, one of the best, like, practical uh, wound effects I've ever seen, or a fantastic dummy, because this thing hits his forehead. It's probably a combination. And his eyes, and his eyes pop out of his head, and his mouth opens like, what's his do from the stuff? <laughs> Chocolate Chip Charlie? He's like, ah! And I'm pretty sure that was a that definitely was like a prosthetic with a fucking prop axe in his head. It looks so fucking good. Oh, it's great. Like, you see it get buried in his forehead and he goes right down canton's like oh shit yeah canton goes oh shit gets out of the way and then fucking uh jason fleming and uh west duty blow the remaining passengers or crew members in this room away yeah they just fucking destroy them with these fucking guns they add 209 both of them oh yeah yeah exactly yeah the only ones that are in there that survive are you know Chilton and the fucking captain. Yeah, Captain Atherton. Who is very bloody crispy British, I must say. Jesus Christ, son of a bitch! I really thought this captain was gonna last longer than he did. Just putting that out there. As soon as, like, the disaster happens, actually, kind of seemingly before that, like, he's not willing to put up with, uh, Chilton, sh- uh, Canton shit. I almost called him Chilton. <laughs> yeah, I'll be calling him Chilton all night. <laughs> he wasn't willing to put up with Canton shit, and now he's especially not, and he's, yeah. like, constantly telling him to shut up and calm down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, while they're arguing, uh, and basically the Mercs take, uh, those two under, you know, those two and, uh... Famka under their wing, let's say. Mm, yeah. It cuts back to Mamuli getting grabbed like fucking jaws and being like dragged back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. This thing smacks him around this room like it grabs him and it's and swings him into a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> A bunch of giant pipes. <laughs> yeah, pipes and metal nonsense. Like he gets throttled, um, and then pulled through um like a vent or something. Yeah, and while while this is happening, it's it, Canton's doing like a voiceover saying, "I thought it was one of them, one of those things." Yeah, he's like, "They they they attack the ship. They're all over the place." Haven't you seen them? And they're like, "Seen what? Seen what? Yeah, what are you talking about?" Um, yeah, and like, uh, and then Mamuli gets, and now his his demise is a little more splattery because when he gets pulled through, like. And I was going to say, like, this movie does a lot by just throwing some fucking fake blood in some water. Yeah, because and it works. Because that immediately adds to the volume of what you're seeing. So, like, it hits and, like, this big spray of, like, just kind of flies out of this vent. It's so gross looking and awesome. Well, then Treat, he grabs the fucking uh, machine gun. And uh, Benny, I think Benny gets one, too. And then they got the fucking parts. And they just start, like... Booking it out of this place. Yeah. Oh, this so- this shot is so fucking cool. They start running down this hallway, and it's like this, uh, the the floor is like this kind of steel, um, I don't want to call it a grating, but it's like these series of steel plates that make a little platform, and, like, one of these things is burrowing through it, and it looks like, um, I would call it, like, the beginning of the Godzilla movie, where he's- It's uh, fucking Tremors, man. Yeah. Yeah, Tremors. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah, where it's blasting up the metal as it's going through, and it stops right before they get to the door. Yeah, it's really fucking cool. And they're firing this fu- these machine guns behind them at this thing, and it's it's just not stopping. And then in the scuffle, I think Famke gets away? Yeah, she, she goes to the elevator. Mm-hmm. Essentially, she gets to the elevator, and she's trying to, like, make it so that the door doesn't open. She hits, like, the emergency stop, but then, uh... Tree and fucking Pantucci come in and, and they almost like blow her away. She smacks Pantucci with a shoe. <laughs> with the fucking heel of her shoe too. Yeah. And he and she, and she's like, Oh, you hit me in the face. And she she or you broke my I think you broke my nose. And she's like, Yeah, give me a chance to break the rest of your face. And he's like, What is this about? <laughs> and then you get this uh pretty eerie uh part where essentially they're in the elevator and you can just hear like the the outside of the elevator something moving around it and like kind of trying to compress it yeah there's two very uh, amusing sequences in this one when west duty comes back to find them all because they all get in the same elevator um finds them all he goes in and goes drop it talking to pantucci uh finnegan and because they're holding weapons but famke still has her shoe they drop their guns and she just drops her shoe. <laughs> As if it's a weapon. It was, right. <laughs> it's so good. And then uh Cant Canton fucking blows his cover. If you know, we kinda already gave it away a little bit in this episode already, but yeah. he, he basically goes, Ah, oh, Hanover, you you can't do this and, and Treat Williams is like, Ah, what do you guys know each other? And he's like, Uh whoops. No. Insurance money? Question mark. <laughs> um 
<laughs> so, so they're like, oh, we're going to get the fuck off this ship. And again, Canton's like, that's what I've been trying to tell you. There's something on the ship. And then um, the doors close and then we fucking get our first free fall in this fucking elevator. Well, we got to get the girl at Impanima in there somewhere. The delivery of that sequence, because, like, it's after the elevator jerks a few times, right? And the power kind of yeah. kind of goes all wacky. And, like, the do 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 The only one who I did, like, someone goes, what the fuck is that? And then Pantucci, I just immediately identifies it. He's like, yeah, girl from Ipanema. <laughs> That's what it is. They're all obviously referring to the creature. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> great comedic timing. It's fucking great. And then these people somehow survive a 10-story fucking drop. This fucking thing looks like it's fallen down the Empire State Building. I mean, we did say this is a gigantic-ass cruise ship. I, I know, but I'm just saying, like, that to give you the immensity of this fucking ship. I'm going to say they should all have fucking died right there, but I'm going to just ignore that because I enjoyed the rest of this film. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about that too, but also when I w went back and rewatched it, I'm like, I don't know if that elevator is falling at top speed. Yeah, well, yeah, because the brakes are on. It's like that Gremlins, the Gremlins 2 thing where they they hit the fucking bottom and then they like tumble out of it. Oh, oh yeah, like on the money there with that one. Yeah. But now we get the uh, the reveal of uh, what's left of, well, the first batch of people they find. The gore way. <laughs> I was going to say it looks like Gray Fox had been there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to just say, you know, just, you know, bring back Event Horizon just for one second. It was like... And that was going to go there, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it is that scene where it's like pieces are starting to come together. You're realizing the gravity, <laughs> no pun intended with the Event Horizon <laughs> reference there, but the gravity of the situation where you're just now finding, oh, fuck, there's a lot of dead bodies in this hallway. Oops. And not just dead bodies, like skeletons of people who look like they, like, one, they're, you can still see, like, muscles in their faces, and they're all frozen in horror. Um, but... It's all skeletal remains of people who've been sucked dry. Right. Yeah. And I think we might as well just talk about this now because I feel like we're about to get to the point where the creature is unofficially revealed. Yeah. yeah. But, like, just picture a fucking Twinkie except you only sucked out the fucking cream part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like drinking a Capri Sun and you're left with the fucking pouch all shriveled up. Oh, yeah. No, that's even better. Or you know what? Here's an even better one. Like in the old fucking like Tex Avery cartoons where like a cat used to fucking stick a whole fish in his mouth and then pull the bones out intact. Yeah. Yeah, that that with more goo. Yeah, the the way these things kill you. It's fucking horrifying. Yeah, the way these things kill you is they they eat you and but they don't swallow you they just keep you in your their mouth and they fucking drink you yeah <laughs> and then spit out your fuck all the shit they can't digest they suck the bones dry well not dry dry but like they just like once they're done with you like they just kind of spit out this like 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 some of these people's eyeballs are still in their skulls yeah there's still some muscles attached but like it's it's disgusting um it's a, it's what i imagine like what would happen to you in the sarlacc pit you know those fucking wax bottles the nickel nips yes with the juice inside yeah it's like that you know you put one of those like hole in your mouth and you dr and you fucking chew it and you squeeze the juice out and you spit the fucking wax out that's what it's like oh yeah 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 almost or like a ballistics dummy like that's been ravaged by something oh yeah there you go so at the end of this at the end of this hallway is a closed door and uh you know the hallway is totally covered in blood and bodies yeah and they start to see all this compression going on at the end so they all kind of freeze and after about a minute of this happening, it stops. So they, they start walking slowly, <laughs> like, in that direction. And then um, fucking Mason steps on a skull, because I guess he's just not paying attention to where he's going. And this thing freaks. Ugh. And then these two, you see, like, uh, these, I mean, you don't know their tentacles yet exactly, but, like, they're, they're like, bulging out the fucking steel paneling on either side of these of this wall it looks like the wall has veins all of a sudden yeah like it's these two very kind of uh like artery looking uh uh, uh impressions kind of start forming outs on the side of the wall mm -hmm. and it's fucking awesome looking because it, it one looks practical it is it is <laughs> oh, god it's so <laughs> yeah. fucking cool yeah. even the fucking door that bows is practical there's so much of this movie that is like that is very tangible and touchable and like has a very definitive like I'm like, I know that's at least something that someone can touch. Yeah. And it all looks so good. Oh, yeah. And they book it again, firing behind them. I do like I do like a moment in the scene where someone drops a gun and Treat Williams goes to pick it up. But, uh... uh Trillian picks it up? Yeah, well, yeah, well, Trillian picks it up, but, um... He, Treat Williams gonna pick it back up and Sagat stops him. He's like, no, like, not while well, I'm a not woman charge. And as soon as this thing makes an appearance, he's like, nope, here's your gun! Like He, like, fucking alley-oops <laughs> it with his foot to him. Yeah, he fucking alley-oops it with his foot up to his hands. They both just open fire. 
fire in this fucking thing. Yep. So that they escape, and then we get kind of the reveal that Canton fucking, you know, like we said in the beginning, is doing this for the insurance money because he couldn't actually afford to keep it going, and how he hired the mercs, and, you know, the captain's kind of ready to punch his ass out. Because it's all his fault that all this kind of happened. But I feel like the creature would have attacked the boat anyway. No, 100%. But we get, we get this great scene where Pantucci's kind of like off to the side freaking out and this like white goo just starts fucking dripping on his back. Yeah. And you're like, okay, what the fuck now? And it is it's literally so fucking good. this tentacle, the tentacle's maw salivating yep about to eat him he turns around and screams and then smacks this fucking tentacle and it like (laughs) and it like and it like sucks up into the fucking rafters and then they all look up and they see this fucking tentacle like undulating up in the the rafters and you see this fucking hand like uh 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 impression like kind of come out of the side of the oh belly oh my god and then they just open fire on this fucking thing and like the stomach rips open and fucking billy spills out onto the fucking floor dude he looked like gus fring in fucking breaking bad man like straight <laughs> up you don't see it right away because he he falls and first it's just like this most of his clothing is gone because he's being digested and like his skin is all burned on one side and like he's all blistered he's covered in goo um, and he turns around, and half of his head is missing. Yeah. Um, like, like it's just, like, he's got one of his, like, the the skull is exposed, and, like, basically the top chunk of his head is, uh, like, top right chunk is missing. I feel like this is one of those, f- the first times that we really implemented, like, the part practical, part green screen makeup. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I could see it. You know what I mean? I was like, it looks amazing. No, because it's all practical, but like the parts of his head that are missing were obviously like chroma keyed and like. Yeah. So that's one effect that's really fucking cool that I think is one of the first instances of it so far, um, like in history. And then like that scene where I just that I just described where you can see like his hand in the belly, like Anaconda does the same exact fucking thing, and I think it comes out the next year. Or the same year? I could see that. I mean, Anaconda had that whole thing where it's like eating and digesting people and like this is what they look like after they're regurgitated. So I could kind of see them like looking at this movie and be like, we got to steal some of those ideas. Exactly. And those two scenes are like nearly identical as far as like how it happens. Yeah, but this one didn't end with someone winking and then dying. This is true. This is way better. baby <laughs> snake, <laughs> baby bird. Big baby bird snake. This is a snake's gonna keep in my pocket for no reason. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's more of it. It's like, I haven't seen it in a while. He fucking talks like this. And he's like, oh, the fuck, that big fucking snake. And he's always got his head back. Oh, just... uh, you, uh, Jennifer Lopez, baby bird, or whatever. Fuck you, monkey blood. So they unload on this motherfucking thing. <laughs> they all split up here, don't they? Sure do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they all panic. And uh, this is where Fampka and Treat kind of you know, team up and she's like, listen, uh, if you can get me out of here alive, then we're even because, uh, this thing comes to kill fucking treat and she just starts firing on it with this pistol she picked up. Yeah. Well, this is the first time you see one of these things open up, right? Oh, the first time you see it, period. Period. Like really, really see it. Um, and to give some detail, so it's a tentacle that's got like, it's a big tentacle too. Like when we say tentacle, it's huge. This can eat a person. Yeah. Yes. They could swallow you whole. They're like, they're, they are more like snakes. It's a, it's like the size of a human, like, uh, it's circumference. Yeah. But it has like a head. And it looks like a, like a closed beak, um, but it has several little openings in its mouth. And then when this thing opens its, its one of these mouths, it looks like someone was like, show me the predator mouth. Okay, add fingers, flip it upside down. More fingers. <laughs> well, and, you know, Canton makes the comment that he thinks it's, you know, these Atoya, if I'm saying that correctly, these leeches yeah. that, uh, that, that live in the waters. And he's talking about in the scene prior how, well, you know, they get only a couple inches big, but... You know, there's been studies where if you were to go down, you know, 5,000 feet, they'd be about a foot long. And if you go down, you know, 20,000 feet, we have no idea how big these things would be. Yeah, like, like full-grown full sharks and shit. I wonder if that's true. I don't know. I, I wonder if it's just like a Jurassic Park thing where it just sounds right enough that you just buy it. Well, Atoya are real 
creatures. They're like deep sea worms. Right, but I'm specifically saying the fact that it's like, oh, I, I believe that be, the further down you go, the bigger they get because they sell you so hard on it. Well, that's that's what he's musing that they are, you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. There's also that was, there was that weird case where like um those like uh, deep sea crustaceans were getting bigger and bigger and one of them was trying to burrow through the bottom of like a drilling vessel at some point a couple years ago. Really? Yeah. Yo, it's creepy shit. I'll, I'll pull the picture up after the show and show you. It's nuts. Yeah, I need that. It looks like a fucking deep sea potato bug <laughs> or a roly poly as uh, people in other states call them. <laughs> <laughs> so they they run for their lives that you know like I said Trillian and Finnegan kind of team up after she saves his life and uh the only other significant part here is that when they reform the group uh the captain <laughs> Rest his fucking soul, man. He gets sucked through this fucking catwalk. Oh. <laughs> he gets the old fucking split. Yeah. They, they try to save him. He get Yeah, they do, uh, but his toes touch his head. Yeah, there's like this little fucking hole in the grate, and one leg gets pulled through, and this fucking thing breaks the other leg all the way up to his fucking forehead and gets sucked down. Yeah, and just pulls into this small hole in the, in the floor. A lot of people getting pulled through impossible spaces. And this is where we get the Atoya speech. And uh, so they kind of keep going in a certain direction based on Canton's, uh, you know, mental bru- mental blueprint of the ship. And they eventually come up to a location that's going to take them where they need to go to get at the hell out of Dodge. But uh, unfortunately, it's fucking flooded. Yeah, so they have to swim through this thing. Now, did anybody else get Alien Resurrection flashbacks? Because I feel like that they lifted that shit from this, man. Sure, I got more Poseidon Adventure, to be honest, but I could see that. Uh, yeah, Poseidon, Alien Resurrection. Um, uh, also, uh, in terms of um, uh, relating to real-life fears, fuck that. Yeah. Fun fact, I'm afraid of the ocean. Um, so when the ocean starts to invade the boat... I'm going to start panicking. Yeah. So I'm going to say Titanic 2 and Ghost Shark were really hard for you to fucking get through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, not really, because, like, like those, because, like, one, Titanic 2 was so non-convincing to watch, and, like, Ghost Shark was like, I'm like, that's a bay. Also non-convincing to watch? Yeah. I'm like, that's a bay. I used to live by a bay. Like, this is, this is the middle of the fucking ocean. Yeah. That's one of my irrational fears is being marooned out there. Mm. Sure. Or being or being surrounded by that much open water. Or giant man-eating tentacles. Uh, man-drinking tentacles, I suppose. That too, yeah. I don't want any deep-sea worms sucking my, bu- my muscles and organs out. Also, like, I was thinking, too, like, if I had to do this, I don't know if I could. Because I, I, I wear contacts. Oh, yeah. And that's like some salty ass fucking seawater. It's salt. It's salty. I don't know if I can hold my breath that long. Yeah, and I'm just thinking about like I don't know. I don't want to fucking drown because that's horrible. But I don't want to be eaten by a tentacle monster or a shark or just drown. Yeah. 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 Any of that shit. It all sounds terrible. Or a killer whale. I feel like that would be a bad way to go. Right. And how the fuck do you navigate your way through that? Well, I don't even. How the fuck does Treat know where he's going? But anyway, while they're mulling over whether they're gonna dive into this fucking water and find a way out. Uh, you know, Pantucci makes a bad joke about, well, you know, <laughs> it, it can't get any worse, right, guys? And then the fucking power goes out and all the <laughs> lights turn off except for the emergencies, like, above the doorways. So they all jump into the fucking water to go to the others. Well, Treat and Treat... Well, not all of them at first. Treat and Sagat jump in. And Sagat, Sagat gives uh, Famka, like, one of those fucking uh, miniguns. And uh, Pantucci's like, hey, just so you know, like, you got to be careful when you fire this thing. It has a big, you know, it has a huge recoil. A kick, and yeah. And she's like, yeah, fuck you. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a loser. I love, like, after Treat and Sagat and um, Fleming, when they all go in, fucking, <laughs> they're all standing there. And Pantucci goes, can you just get asthma? Or do you have to be born <laughs> with it? Legitimate question. And apparently that was like a fucking ad lib line, and I'm so glad they kept it because it's fucking funny as hell. I have something unfortunate to admit, but uh, I actually forgot Kevin J. O'Connor actually existed until we watched this film. And I, I want to like <laughs> look this guy up and see what else he did because he really just made this fucking movie for me. I remember him from. That's all I remember him from are Stephen Summers movies besides besides the lord of illusions he's in van helsing oh i know boy. well it's also a steven summers movie but he's also in there will be blood i didn't see him in that uh but he's in lord of illusions um which came out a couple years i think 95 I'll, I'll i'll check it out van helsing i'm still not sold on i know you guys seem to enjoy it but uh you guys gonna someone's got to sell me on that film he plays like renfield or igor or some shit okay I could see that. And he's all done up in a bunch of makeup. You won't even recognize him except for his voice. While they're swimming through, they, uh, you know, 
uh, Treat and Sagat get through no problem, and then fucking Mulligan starts to freak, and he starts screaming underwater. And because uh, a fucking a floating hand passes him, kind of like a la Jaws. It's Samuel, it was uh, I thought it was Samuel Jackson right away. Oh yeah, it was Ben Gardner's hand. Yeah, Ben. <laughs> this motherfucker's been split across the entire ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They get out no problem, and their whole thing is like, oh, when we get to the other side, we'll fire twice. And I don't think they ever do because no, they don't. Uh, Mason, Famka, and uh, Pantucci just see this thing start fucking like breaking down the door. And Famco just starts firing. Doesn't he actually break through? They don't even see it break down the door. They, you just, this is the first time you see these things in like action, action. Yeah. All right. These fucking tentacles spill out down this fucking hallway, and it's terrifying because there's two of them now, and they're just like, yeah. Well, it's also like the, it's just this pulsating mass of movement. Like you can't, it's, it's, you know, there's heads, but you can't see where it starts. They're like opening and like snapping, right? And right. And it, it just looks like the fucking hallway is like vomiting them down the fucking hallway. Yeah. Right. And then the tentacles hit the door, and it literally explodes into the room. Yeah, because they slam the door, and then and then they're shooting at it. And then they're all just like, "Fuck and, it, we're going, we're going in." Well, Famka, Famka shoots this fucking machine gun after <laughs> Benny told her to like watch the recoil. Yeah, she wasn't listening to Pantucci, and she falls in the fucking water, and she's like, "All right, I guess I'm swimming." That's such a good payoff joke for the for the kick on the fucking gun. Yeah, but yeah, so then they all start swimming, and Mason, he's the last one to jump in, and uh, of course he gets fucking eaten. But not before he fucking arms a grenade and blows it up. Oh man. Yeah, not before he fucking arms his own thermal detonator. Like, yeah. what the fuck are those goddamn weapons? <laughs> He's holding a thermal detonator! Well, then they they really go hardcore on the fucking aliens reference, where they, they basically all are in this friggin' room, locked down, hiding. Yeah. And and it's kind of the same thing, where, like, oh, we're just waiting for him to get in. Mulligan says, fuck that, we're gonna make a stand right here, right now, we're gonna lock ourselves in and eat the food here. And they're like, no, you're an idiot. The ship, the ship is gonna sink... And they're they're not sending a rescue team for like another forty eight hours, right? So treats like, listen, man. I saw a guy put a fish in a bottle and put a cork on top of it, and then I tossed the and then he tossed the bottle to a baby octopus, and that baby octopus felt its way all around that bottle, and then within in under two minutes it took the cork out, slid inside, and ate the fish. And Pantucci's like, what's the, what's the fucking moral of the story, man? Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, we're the fish. <laughs> and then Mulligan, which, you know, tops this fucking thing off like a cherry on top, backs up. You know, he's doing his best Bill Paxton impression. You watch as he's backing up, freaking out. He's staying in here no matter what. And then the fucking door opens behind him, and this tentacle creeps out like a fucking anaconda. <laughs> And goes to eat him. Yeah, and you get react you get reaction shots of everyone in the room. They're all like, "Oh, you're fucked." Yeah, and he's like, "What? What are you staring at?" <laughs> um, and uh, unexpectedly, it doesn't eat him right away. Dude, he unloads on this thing. He unloads on this thing, and actually, kind of, he scares it off. Well, it, it like it count it came in through like a vent that goes over like the 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 stove. Um, so he shoots at it and like retreats back up there because retreat Williams <laughs> because. The f- a fire light goes off. Oh my god! I'll show myself out for that. Uh, yeah. So anyway, there's like fire coming out of the stove, and it kind of like scares it back up. There, and he's like, "Hey, yeah, boy, where are you? You want some of your wanker? Yeah, whatever's." Oh, box your ears! Yeah. <laughs> no- <laughs> Not even like five seconds after that happens and everybody leaves the fucking room, there's another one right behind him and it fucking eats him. Yeah, they leave while he's fucking fighting this thing. Oh yeah, they're just like, fuck this. He's a distraction now. Well, two seconds ago, he was like holding them at gunpoint like nobody's going anywhere. Oh yeah, they're using any opportunity to get away from this madman and the right. fucking creatures. Fuck them. Um, so yeah, they, they start running down a hallway. It's kind of implied here that the creature is pushing them in a certain direction. Yeah, they keep like shutting the doors and like stealing them off. Right. Oh, that's right. Because it, it closes doors and closes the valves. Like, it figured out how to do that. Yeah. And- exactly. Well, that's what I think the previous scene is hinting at, even, you know, yeah. with the combination. Yeah, of- I love that that was immediately after this this the octopus speech, because it, like, it just ties it right together. Yep. And Pantucci's like, how could they cut the power, man? They're animals. Well, then Chilton, he's like, all right, yeah, I know this fucking ship like the back of my hand. Just keep going this way. <laughs> I built it, dumbass. And Famka's like, all right, well, are you coming with us? He's like, yeah, in a moment. Like, Fame like exhaustion and then they like turn a corner and he like just like 
fucking goes through a different door. He fucking leaves. Yeah, I wasn't sure if he was going to stay, like, if his babyface turn was going to stick, and then I was like, ah, you piece of shit. Oh, he gets shittier by the moment after this. Well, he tells him, like, this is the direction to go to go to the bow, and this is the way out. Well, he says they're they're pushing him towards the bow of the ship, and treats like, what's at the bow of the ship? And he's like, I don't know, but you guys can go. I'm not going. Fuck you. <laughs> well, they go, and uh, Treat says apparently it's the... Feeding ground. It's the mass grave of the one percent. Yeah, it's you're like, oh, there's the rest of the passengers and the crew, all of them, and anybody else. It looks like Mal Bolge's living room. <laughs> ah, the table's covered in gore. <laughs> Frank Welker's there. Welcome, treat. Hello. Oh man, that voice is deadly on my throat. Mm, that's why I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just wall to wall. It is wall to wall bodies and skeletons. It's awesome. Well, and the best part too is while they're in there, you know, like Joe was saying, and even me to a point, you know, these these tentacles are hurting them into this location, and then you yeah. just kind of like Jaws 3D. These things start attacking the fucking <laughs> one side of the room, and they blow the glass out, or the uh, no, well, not glass. That was Jaws 3D, but they blow the wall out, and all the fucking water just comes flying in. Yeah, Lou Gossett Jr. is there. He's like, it's some kind of shock, mother, and. Treat it's yeah. like no, it's not. <laughs> it's a fucking octolus. And uh, yeah, this is so. This this act, this whole event is like what triggers like the big sinking of the ship. Like it blows a fuck. These things blow a hole in the fucking hull, and then this ship starts going down like super fast. Yeah, and then it's like you get a you get a two prong chase sequence because um, Treat Williams and Famke split off, and then West Duty and Kevin G. O'Connor split off. Well, Famke and Treat, they see Canton fucking sneak into one of these rooms and lock himself in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? How did they catch up to him, by the way? Well, I think he came back the opposite direction. Like, I think he came, he, he had, for some reason, had to come back that direction. Cause they... I mean, maybe he went into, like, his old office to delete his fucking browser history, because, you know, <laughs> if he's going to die, he doesn't want anyone to find that shit. <laughs> the emails, man. Yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Trump told me to delete these. He doesn't want to look like Hillary with the acid wash. A private email server? What was I thinking? <laughs> oh, man. Um, but, the, yeah, like a weird pairing of uh, Panducci and uh, Hanover, but they're like, you know, there's only four fucking people left at this point, so what are you going to do? Yeah. I do love their 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 chase weekends because, like, it's just, it's just Hanover, like, being a badass and fucking Pantucci like, ah! He's just bumbling through these hallways. Well, they both have the fucking machine guns, and Panducci trips and knocks into West Studio, and they both drop their guns, and he's like, ah, fuck. And then they grab these uh, those thermal fucking grenades, and uh, Panducci <laughs> just throws his. He throws one, he, he doesn't arm he it. He rips it out of Sagat's hand and just throws it down the hallway, and Sagat's like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and he winds it, and he's like, wait, you didn't tell me to do that. And then the things are coming after him, and they're running in this fucking, like, you know, knee-high water. And uh, Sagat's going, yeah, you know, we need to do something. We got to leave some bait for this thing. We got to leave some bait. And and Pantucci's like, bait, bait, what, what are you talking about, bait? What, what are we going to feed this thing? What are we going to use for bait? I, all I got is a wet stick of gum and a breath, man. And Sagat just shakes his head and just fucking blows the guy's fucking knee out. <laughs> Shoots him in the leg. He fucking pops his knee out, dude. Yeah. He ends up like crawling into a dumb waiter to escape it. Yeah, I thought I thought Pantucci was doomed. Uh, and then he gets like I thought he tucked into like a like a wall alcove or something, but no, it's a yeah, it's a dumb waiter. Yeah. Um, and then uh, West Duty seemingly just kind of runs off. You don't see him for a few minutes. Um, I don't remember where they find, uh, because they, they keep chasing Canton. Doesn't Canton go outside? Yeah, there's, like, a quick scene where, like, Canton is on a balcony, and he, like, looks over the balcony, and he sees an island. Um, and then Famke and, um, Treat come out, and he's like, ah, I lost, oh, by the way, when we're running around, he loses the parts to the ship to fix his boat. Um, and he, like, he loses them in a room where the fucking door is, like, closing off because of the flooding, so he's trying to open the door, and, and he, he loses the parts. So he comes up with a plan to blow up the fucking ship, um, so what he, what he needs to do is get down to his ship, and then he's gonna fucking arm all of those missiles, and then run that ship into the cruise ship, and then... Somehow they're going to get away. Um, I believe we cut back to Panchucci having survived, don't we? Yes. He's in a, he's in some, yeah, he's in some weird room. He's in the gambling hall. Um, he's in a gambling hall, and he sees a pistol. 
um, and he goes to grab it, um, and, uh, Hanover grabs his hand, and he looks, uh, like he's not having a good time. No. And then it kind of pans out, and Hanover's lower torso is just kind of being suckled on by one of these, <laughs> one of these tentacles. He looks like a goddamn Slim Jim in this thing's mouth. Uh, Pantucci, uh, takes, grabs the gun. Yeah. Goes to leave, and I guess, like, kind of looks back at, uh, Hanover, and he's like, alright, he goes to give him the gun again, he's like, don't tell you I didn't give you anything, or don't say I didn't give you anything before. Uh, Goes to leave, and you assume that West Duty is going to shoot himself in the head. And so he takes a shot at Pantucci. And he's just like, you asshole! <laughs> you asshole! <laughs> oh, he regretted that. And then he goes to shoot himself, and he's got no bullets left. And he just screams while this fucking thing has a sagat <laughs> shake. It's so good! I can't, like, the just the pacing and setup of jokes yeah. and one-liners and, like, and gags are so good. It's just, per- it's, like, pitch perfect, man. Yeah, um, because, like, the stages of that whole scene are just, like... Uh, gun, uh, you know, refusal, shot, empty bullets, getting eaten. I'm like, that was such a great <laughs> multi-level joke. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, Finnegan and, and FamK, like, get on this crane thing, uh, and they lower themselves onto the boat. Oh, that's right, because he hasn't been on the boat yet, so he, he just finds out Layla's gone. He drops FamK off at the, um, at, like, the jet ski rental port and he's like, go get a fucking, go get a, go find the keys, go get a jet ski. And then he lowers himself down to the boat. And then he's setting everything up to uh, blow up the ship. And then fucking Pantucci like shows up. And then they have like a heart to heart where, uh, you know, uh, you know, he tells, he tells Pantucci that like, you know, he doesn't think Layla made it and, and what have you. Right. Because earlier in the film, like they talk about, well, they don't talk about, but like, Panducci and Layla were like a thing because they kiss and they're like talking about, oh, I love you. Oh, no, I love you. Oh, that's his girlfriend. Yeah. Straight up. He even says it. Panducci kind of has a moment and like, I was like, that was earned. It sure was. Like, I felt bad for everybody there. Yeah. Even though, and she has like two minutes of screen time and I still felt bad for him. Because he's a likable character. Yeah. Canton corners Famka when she's like getting uh, the fucking jet ski and he's like, he's got a fucking flare gun. And he's like, he's like, all right, give me the fucking keys, please. And she's like, no, fuck you. He's got, he's got a, a sawn off flare gun. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's it's a, it's a large boy, double barrel motherfucker too. Yeah, it looks like Ash's shotgun, but it shoots flares instead. <laughs> the pistol. Yeah. Well, speaking of Ash's shotgun, fucking treat. He, they show it in the beginning of the movie, but he doesn't ever actually do anything with it. But he has this double barrel shotgun just hanging on his fucking like captain's chair. Well, yeah, he keeps it for close encounters, man. Yeah, and treat like yeah, treat arms himself. Uh, he gets he gets ready for the fucking war. Um, but uh, yeah, Canton uh, corners uh, tr- uh, Trillion as she's getting a key for the jet ski, and then like they have kind of a chase. Yeah, and he tries to fucking kill her with a flare gun. He fucking shoots a flare gun at her twice. Like. <laughs> Yeah, twice, and the second time, she fucking dodge rolls this fucking thing. Uh, she dives to the air, and it just barely misses her. And then she, like, makes it at break to the gambling room again, and Canton shows up, and he fucking corners her, and he, like, has this flare gun pointed in her face, and she ends up giving him the keys. And he's like, nope, sorry, can't let you live, because no survivors. And he's like, I don't think this is going to be quick, but it's going to be interesting. And then this is the moment where I was like, this guy is on some next level fucked up shit. Like, he is on some fucking Epstein shit. Well, because he has his gun pointed, it's, it is an inch away from her nose. Right, but the fact of he's excited to shoot this woman in the face with a flare gun. Oh, yeah, because he's like, he's like, I've never killed anyone before. He's like, so I, I think he, he says, like, I didn't think this is how it happened. And, yeah, and then he says... Not intentionally, anyway, he says... I mean, he hasn't caused a child to fall off a cliff yet. Not yet. That we're aware of. Yeah, yet. Uh, but Treat Williams kicks the door open and doesn't shoot him... But shoots around <laughs> him. Around him. <laughs> uh, dude, it's fucking effective, man. It sure is. He just continuously scares the piss out of this guy and just keeps doing it. He's like, Brr, and then he runs away. He's like, nah, I'm good. Brr, and just keeps shooting at like the floor, the walls. Well, you know, it's a pisser for treat because av- as they've established in this film that, you know, once you start making noise, this fucking thing's coming for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, And then we get our fucking big monster reveal holy shit yeah reveal is the key word there because i didn't see this coming at all neither did i i didn't think it was gonna happen like this i thought they would find this thing like at the bottom of the ship so like the room starts to get like like it starts shaking 
and stuff starts getting, like, tossed around, and, like, things are moving in directions they shouldn't be, and the floor starts getting, like, sucked inward, kind of. Now, this is the room they came to earlier, if I'm, if I'm correct, right? Where Yes. Yeah. I think this is the first room they came into, and we get Finnegan's signature now what line. With the Slimer attack and everything, got you. And this, the, the like, okay, they called it a worm, like the Okoye worm. This looks more like, uh, like a giant octopus. Well, the thing is... That is just what Canton's musing that it might be. Okay. The thing is actually called an octolus. That's the name of the monster. Um, it's a fictional creature, obviously. <laughs> but um, it has nothing to do with any real life anything. It's just like kind of based on an octopus, sort of. But it's like its own thing. Yeah, it is. It's got a big fucking octopus head, and these tentacles are swirling everywhere. And like it's covered in teeth and spikes. I can see some people looking at that and being like, "That's a little on the nose with that fucking octopus in a bottle." story but to <laughs> well, me i was like no this is great because before i just assumed it was a bunch of these little fucking tentacle monsters but no yeah. it's literally one thing just like sending its tentacles all over the fucking ship yeah yeah it eats through every, all of its tentacles which is crazy yeah and uh it immediately grabs treat williams and like it's it, which is like such a monster movie thing i loved it like it wraps him around and like picks him up i'm like this is resident evil now this is resident evil <laughs> you took the fucking words out of my mouth connor because this movie yeah by the time we got to the last five minutes i was like this is fucking resident evil 4 <laughs> In the best way possible, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, Chart Williams has a fucking shotgun. Um, uh, but this thing, like, yeah, it, like, it, it scoops him up and, like, actually kind of stuns him. It, like, smacks him in the face. It, it punches him in the face with one of its yeah. tentacles. <laughs> and then it, like, holds him up to his eye, to the thing's eye. And he's like, what are you looking at? And he pulls out the fucking shotgun and blows this motherfucker's eye up. Right in the weak spot. Oh, it's so good. It's great. It's wonderful. It's like a fucking House of the Dead villain. The only thing he was missing was Famka throwing him a fucking rocket launcher going, <laughs> Here, take this! Thanks, Brett. I mean, Trillion. I mean, he did set up those torpedoes, so... That counts. Yeah, and he has his, uh, he did set the autopilot in his boat. Yeah, I think we mentioned it before, but not quite in detail. Like, he's gonna have his boat... Yeah. ...kind of autopilot out and arch back into the boat. So it's gonna make a big old, uh, like a U-turn, essentially. Yeah, and it has all the missiles that are armed on the ship, so it's gonna blow the fuck out of this liner... This cruise liner. And the pisser is, I forget if it's now or in a minute or two, but his boat starts moving and Canton sees this and he's like, fuck. And he literally jumps like two stories to <laughs> land on this boat. <laughs> <laughs> and he breaks his fucking yeah. leg like an asshole. Because the boat is driving away. Oh, right before that, uh, Finnegan goes back to the ship to check to get Mantucci and he's uh, air quoted dead. Yeah, he's seemingly gone and I was legitimately bummed for a few minutes. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Fun fact, he was supposed to be dead, dead. Oh. But the test screenings were like, yeah, you can't kill Mantucci, you gotta bring him, or Pantucci, you gotta bring him back. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where it's like, you know, in the beginning when you don't see people, like, die, but they just, like, have flown off the screen, you're like, okay, that's for an effect. But if it's, like, towards the end and you already know what the creature looks like, it's pretty much, like, implied that they're trying to fake you out. Or it's not showing you a character that's likable and get having uh not showing their death so it's uh, probably easier for an audience to take well yeah i mean dude listen we're gonna get to it in a second but pantucci has fucking plot armor out the ass and i'm kind of okay with it <laughs> he sure does yeah he does <laughs> it's it's totally fine because i just like the character so so Canton fucking falls on this thing breaks his leg and like crawls into the cockpit and he goes to grab the fucking uh the, the controller and he's like oh, I'm getting away and it's like nope it's on autopilot and he's like what the fuck and he sees the course he he loses his glasses because uh, he has glasses in this movie right. he loses them so like he's just looking at shit and just hammering buttons and valves and levers and whatever the fuck and like trying to do something but nothing's working yeah because he can't shut it off in time yeah so so Treat and, and Fam could get away from the the Octolus and they jump on a fucking jet ski and they're gonna go right out the um uh, they're gonna jump out the fucking side of the ship so they can, you know, get away. Ashley, hop on. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Leon, look out. Oh my god, I didn't even think about that part. <laughs> like, literally. Yeah. <laughs> there is a fucking fireball yeah. behind them as this ship starts to explode, and he's literally taking the shotgun and shooting the fucking elevator buttons to open the door. Yeah, he they go to jump out the side of the ship, and the fucking Las Plagas come, and they fucking pour in the side of the hole and chase after him. So he's, and they're fucking scooping around these these hallways in this ship because they're all flooded on a fucking jet ski. This is like the schlocky shit 
that I come to see summer movies for. Dude, but sign me up. You're giving it to me in spades. Like, I love it. But it's good. It's not garbage. It's so... <laughs> no, that's what I mean. It's... it's like When I say schlocky shit, like, it's good schlocky shit. Like, it's... They fucking knew what movie they were making, and they nailed it. Oh, sure did. God, it's so... Like, it's it's ridiculous. He shoots one set of elevator door buttons, the, the door opens, he shoots a second set of elevator door buttons, and the door opens again. Yeah. And then oh, the whole while she's like cocking the shotgun for him. it's like T two yeah he's he's turning around firing the shotgun and then like he's pointing it back he's pointing it over her shoulder yeah. and his and firing behind him and he's like cock it and she turns <laughs> she cocks she pumps the shotgun for him he fires again by the way Famke and Jansen would be deaf yeah um <laughs> it's like the fucking T one thousand chase I think she's just gonna be okay with that because it's either that or getting burned alive or eaten by this fucking tentacle monster so or drowning yeah thanks for the tinnitus treat well like joe was saying the lost plagas is right behind him and that fireball's catching up and they fucking hit the exit and do a fucking jump as this ball this ball of fire engulfs them and they hit the water yeah and speed off well kenton hits the fucking ship and all the bombs go off he sees it coming and puts his hands in front of his face he's like no the screen the, sc- <laughs> the radar screen fucking like where the where the poker game is going on the digital poker fucking just reads game over <laughs> and fucking yeah. hits the boat yep. and explodes and then at, yeah so like Sean was saying as this thing explodes Famke and, and Treat fly out of the side of the ship simultaneously while Canton crashes into it explodes and then the fucking Octolith monster explodes into a million fucking pieces and then this ship blows up like 17 times but i'm totally with it because this is totally a minute dude it looks so good yeah it's a miniature getting blown to shit and it looks amazing yeah oh, that's why it looked amazing because i wasn't yeah. sure if it, I'm, I'm like i'm like was that cg or was that a was that a tiny boat i'm pretty sure it was all practical as far as the explosion i mean it's it, it most certainly was composited because treat and Famgard definitely fucking composited against that fucking fireball. Oh yeah, totally. There's some of that where you notice it, but you're like, you're like, I'm like, it's noticeable, but not bad. It's fine. And then they, uh, they, they ride that jet ski to Shang Tsung's island. Sure do. And like, honestly, I'm saying Shang Tsung's island, but honestly, like, I'm waiting for fucking John Hammond to walk around a corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was it was fucking Isla Nublar. What is it? Isla Nublar was the first island. Oh no, yeah, man. But they fucking crashed at Site B. Is what happened. They get to the uh, the the island in the jet ski, and of course, like as you might expect, it's their James Bond ending, man. Like straight up. Yeah, and as you might expect, like he gets and he's like, ah, shot to shit. The jet ski. Um, and then they have uh, they fucking hook up on the beach real quick. Yeah, there's a good there's a good payoff joke with the cold beer thing because she like makes him a deal. If she like the whole thing we were talking about before, where like if she gets if he gets her off the ship, he can have anything he wants. He's like, how about a cold beer? Yeah, and she kisses him. And he's like, better than a cold beer, huh? Yeah, pretty good. Um, and then uh, in what was uh, now very obviously reshoots. Yeah, we have a pickup. We have pickup shoots. A pickup shot of <laughs> Pantucci on the fucking. Pantucci's on a surfboard. <laughs> swimming to shore here's the thing with the surfboard the surfboard was also set up a minute ago because when the boat when when uh treat williams boat blows up there's a there's like a you're looking down at the boat and it blows up and a surfboard goes flying into the air past the camera yeah yeah and, and panducci's like hey hey man hey uh finnegan your your fucking surfboard it almost killed me yeah it almost cut me in half man yeah because he says it the, the he says i thought you were dead and he's like yeah it came after me he's like um he's like but i don't i dove overboard um he was snapping at my ass he's like i just swam my ass off and he's like by the way your surfboard almost cut me in half so he shows up and um uh... They all reunite. And then they hear that scream of something. Yeah, well, Pantucci's like, oh, it's a nice island. looks pretty nice. And then some kind of large animal monster fucking thing starts tromping through the fucking forest. And then fucking Treat Williams is just like, now what? And it ends. Cut to credits, man. I, I would have done with a sequel. But if we're being realistic here, even with the way this movie went, they're getting eaten like five minutes after the end of this film. Um, Do you want to know what this was supposed to be uh, some kind of prehistoric island journey to the center of the earth kind of thing um sort of uh so steven summers was set up to do a king kong remake for the oh 90s oh my god whoa famka jansen's gonna get captured by king kong so that's what this was it was like a kind of like an unofficial nod to skull island okay so they end up this is Skull Island. They 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 show up on fucking Skull Island, and now they're just living there, or they get killed by this thing, or whatever. But it was supposed to be set up to 
the next film. So it wouldn't be like connected per se. It would be like a little fun little Easter egg thing, but that's was like a tease for the the new King Kong that was supposed to be coming out. Sure. And then it was that dissolved and went into development hell and then was picked up again in 2005 when Peter Jackson made King Kong. Holy shit. Yep. <laughs> so that's pretty nuts. So where were you, what are we doing? We we buying a ticket to this? We touring it or are we waiting for VOD? I wish I would have bought a ticket to this. I wish I could have seen this in theaters. This was a fucking blast. Uh this is like the one of the most fun movies I've watched for the show so far. Um uh and quite frankly, I think it's one of my favorite things we've done in the two years we've been doing this. Hands down. I love the share of this movie. I don't have any complaints except the fact that like I think it was a little long in the tooth at, at times, but I don't care. Like it didn't, it didn't harm my enjoyment of this movie at all. I love this to death. This is so good, and I don't have anything really else to say about it. <laughs> I just, I love this movie. So, I love this movie so much. <laughs> um, buying a motherfucking ticket to this straight up. I wish I was old enough at the time to just go see this by myself because I would have went and saw it like fucking nine times. Uh, this is one of the films that is okay. So I got to see Deep Blue Sea and I got to see Anaconda in theaters because my folks took me. So I didn't get, you know, obviously I couldn't get into a rated R movie unless an adult had, had, was going to take me. This one I, I missed out on. I just, we, it just never connected and we never went to go see it in theaters. When this dropped on video um, and I rented it, I was so excited when it finally dropped on fucking video. I rented it like, I think I rented it like three or four times, like in a row. And at that point, I think Easy Video was doing like six day rentals. Um, I watched the fuck out of this, um, that summer that this came out on, on video, but I, I wish I got to see this in the theaters. Um, this movie has everything you could possibly fucking want in a, in a blockbuster film or just a film in general. I mean, especially if you're into this type of stuff, um, it, the comedy's on point, the action's on point, the acting's on point, the effects are on point, the, uh, everything, the story, the, the story beats, the, the way everything unfolds, the exposition, everything is just this sweet, lovely cocktail of a film that just hits every single fucking note you want to see and hear. Um, and you just keep coming. I, I, I still come to this movie and I watch it and I enjoy it. Like I enjoyed it the first time I saw it. Um, it's one of my favorite movies like of all time. It's like my top, it's in my top 10 easy. I might be in mine now, <laughs> you know, and we have, uh, we have Jerry Goldsmith doing the score, which I absolutely love. We have Rob Bottin, one of my favorite special effects artists of all fucking time, um, designing these creatures and doing practical effects for them. We have fucking industrial light and magic. One of the, <laughs> one of the best, uh, you know, digital compositing and, and, and practical effects companies ever ever doing doing the effects on this you know um it's just so good and, it, and it's such a fucking shame that this did not get the attention or the love it deserved when it came out um i feel like there's a huge um audience for this now and i feel like it's in in in, in recent years it's getting a lot a lot of love uh kino lorber just put out a blu-ray of this brand new 4k scan um and i picked it up it is fucking fantastic yeah i might have to grab it personally <laughs> i only had it on vhs until i just bought the 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 kino lorber blu-ray um and it not only is just like the the transfer worth the money but like the uh special features that were produced um by Heather Buckley are fucking fantastic, especially like all of the special effects interviews and, and behind the scenes shit. It's just such a great disc. Um, if you've never seen this movie before, do yourself a favor and see it and, um, you know, grab that fucking Blu-ray cause it's amazing. Um, so yeah, buy a ticket. One of my favorite movies ever. And I'm really happy that we got to do it on the show because, um, just to cap that off, this show, again, I know I've said it before, we've said it before, but, like, this, the, the point of this show is not to just go shit on movies. We, we want to share with you things or, or hidden gems or, or, or movies that got put to the wayside, you know, that got sort of thrown out 
by um, uh, 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 critics and 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 your average moviegoer, right? So um, so yeah, buying a ticket, fucking fantastic movie. I am definitely buying a ticket, and I, I just might have to pick up that fucking Blu-ray because it looks and sounds amazing. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know how much I can really add to what Joe and Connor have already said. I can add a personal anecdote that I, you know, like I said earlier in this episode, I had never heard of this film until Joe said, hey, we really got to do this as a blockbuster bomb. And uh, you know what? As a dumb kid, I went and saw fucking Godzilla with my dad and my brothers because, you know, that that was a smart decision as a small child. Ooh. I think we all did because it was accessible. Well, you know, those fucking Taco Bell commercials, man, with the Chihuahua, they sold me. Oh, yeah. Hey, 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 no, no. I never saw that shit in theaters, and I didn't see that shit until years later on VHS. Connor, you had the T-shirt for Clash of the Titans. I had the Godzilla 98 fucking T-shirt. <laughs> It was the goddamn Godzilla coming through the fucking uh, dock, and it had this, like, green goo in it. You know, as a fucking elementary school student, I thought that was the coolest shit at the time. Oh, hell yeah. I had the Taco Bell cup, dude. There you go. Joe mm-hmm. knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. It's fucking Godzilla. Yeah. Putting that aside, 100% buying a ticket to this. Uh, again, I, I don't even know what I could really add. Treat Williams, Kevin J. O'Connor, Famke Jensen, fucking Wes Studi, all great in this film. Uh, Anthony Held, uh, everyone in this is good. It, and um, Connor, I don't know if it's the best movie I've seen on this show, but for this season, you know, it's right up there with fucking Lawnmower Man. Um, <laughs> better than Lawnmower Man, but it's up there. It's you know, it, it's it's cream of the crop of B movies. Oh, sh- for sure, it's it's a fucking B movie on an A movie budget, dude. Exactly. And you can't get any better than that. Because you know, this what was this movie made with? Forty five million. This movie was made for forty five million dollars. That's insane. Its opening weekend was just under five million. Oh, it's a fucking disgrace, man. And its gross was eleven million. It's sad. It's fucking devastating. That hurts my feelings. Uh, right? And and I guess I'll cap off my review or whatever we call these, my 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 final word. Um, and I'll I'll reference Event Horizon one final time because I just fucking watched it yesterday and it's on my mind. But that was another film that I think we'll just never do for this show because it's generally well received. Yeah, and and that and it's it's gotten like over the years people have been like, wow, Event Horizon's fucking great. Oh yeah, yeah. I, it's still Paul Anderson's best movie. Easy. That is one of those movies. I, I don't know if the actors in this have a similar uh, feeling about it, but that's a movie that, you know, now people look at it like Connor was just saying about, oh, man, it's really well done, but it was just, you know, people missed it. And, uh, you know, that movie made, like, no money. And uh, obviously a different feel. You know, I'm not trying to compare the two too much outside of real sure. kind of base level kind of stuff. But, like, I, it, it was kind of funny, you know, watching these films just, you know, maybe not back to back, but within a couple days of each other, just the weird similarities just in little, little spots here and there that... Uh, I was making, but, uh, you know, long story short, buying a fucking ticket, I can't say it enough times. Yeah. I wanted to add um, that I think this movie is uh, better and much more deserving of the spotlight than Deep Blue Sea is. Absolutely. And uh, I kind of want to show people this movie because I think I actually, I think I might buy the Blu-ray and uh, make and convince my roommates to watch it. That way I can watch them get, uh, get, get all excited about it. All I wanted to do was share this with you guys and I got to do that and it's a success. And I hope everybody listening <laughs> goes out <laughs> and finds this movie and sees it. Yeah, please watch this in a group because that's yeah. a, probably an optimal way to watch this because I think just from a reaction from the room, I think this would make this movie. That's one way to make this movie better would be with a group because if you're all kind of in the moment together, I think it would make for a blast of a showing. And then watch the Mummy because that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Yeah, fucking a. Uh, yeah, uh, summer's almost over, and this is definitely one of those flicks to watch while it's hot out at your barbecue or what have you. This film is on Roger Ebert's like most hated list or some shit like that. Well, he's dead, so haha. Oh my god. Um, it's just like it's just kind of like <laughs> fuck you. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Hey man, Siskel gave Baby's Day out two thumbs up, so you know. It's an opinion. Yeah, it sure is. This movie's alive and kicking. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. R.I.P. Roger Eper. Jesus. He's not a bad guy. He just has shit taste. 
So that's it. That's Deep Rising from 1998, directed by Steven Summers. Hey, everybody, if you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Android, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, or Podbean. And make sure to leave us a five-star review if you dig the show, because it helps us get out of the bottom of the dumpster into more eardrums. Yeah, and if you're on the social medias, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Joel Scola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor the Deep Knight Rises McGraw. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. What the hell is that? Girl from Ipanema.